First, they have Kansas next week. The winner would face Oklahoma if they're able to hold off in the Big 12 South. Meanwhile, Tennessee, we talked about them a second ago. Eric Ainge to Lucas Taylor diving in. Extra point was blocked, so they're up 6 0 on Vandy, and that makes for a happy Phil Fulmer. Vandy, though, striking back. Mackenzie Adams rolling right to Brad Allen in the flat. No one near him. He scores. Vandy has since kicked a field goal. And let's see, Vandy's up now 14-9. Tennessee was the team that got the field goal. That would be a big win for Vandy and even bigger for Georgia. You know, hugely inconsistent team is Tennessee. I mean, it's hard to figure out. They look so good one week. They play really well against a team like Arkansas. The next week, they don't play well. Give Vandy an awful lot of credit. Of course, Tennessee in control of their own destiny in the SEC East. But not in control of that game right now. He's Trev Alberts. I'm Adam Zucker. This has been Game Room. We'll see you back here at halftime between Northern Illinois and Navy. Kickoff coming up from Annapolis. Next on CSTV Football Nation. Bye. Today in Annapolis, Paul Johnson sends out one of Navy's winningest senior classes as they look for its seventh win of the season. Northern Illinois stands in the way. Football Nation in Annapolis today. It's Navy and NIU next. It is senior day in Annapolis as one of Navy's winningest senior classes looks to go out a winner here today in Annapolis as Navy hosts the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Welcome inside Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. I'm Pete Medhurst. It's great to have you with us on CSTV today. Joined as always by the quarterback Scott Zolak. And what a wacky couple of weeks it's been for the Navy midshipmen. Scott, they have put up some incredible offensive numbers. Survival, of course, of sorts. But in the end, when the dust settles, their fifth consecutive bowl bid secured last week. That's right. You got the point set of bull berth in your back pocket. But it's been an emotional two weeks for the midshipmen. And we just have to go back to the Notre Dame game. Talk about getting a monkey off your back. You get the big catch by Reggie Campbell, which puts the defense in a great position in overtime to shut down the two-point conversion. All the middies get the day off on Monday. They close school down. Next thing you know, they're on the road to North Texas, where they were down 21 to 3. And they had to overcome a big deficit, ran off 29 straight unanswered points in that second quarter. And right now, they're looking for their seventh win. Crazy numbers last week, 572 yards rushing. The 45 first half points, they were actually losing at halftime, 49-45. A couple of uh, big numbers from their slot backs and the 136 combined points scored in a regulation game. Of course, an NCAA record. But today, the trigger man is missing, Scott. Taipanoa Kaheaku and Hata sits this one out. One of the best relief pitchers in college football this year has been Jared Bryant. Yeah, and we've watched Paul Johnson's offense this year and if the fullbacks down if the slot backs down the next guy steps in nobody misses the beat that's the same way with the quarterback today Jared Bryant he's played well when he's been called upon but he needs to do one thing today Pete and that's protect the football for Northern Illinois it has been a season of injuries for them especially on the defensive side of the football ironically this week coach Joe Novak as enthusiastic about a football game uh, as any coach you might expect despite the fact that his team is two and eight and really banged up coming in here and I think you really have to be and there's only one way you approach it when you have over 14 starters missing at least one game throughout the season it's tough to win a big win last week against Kent State it was at home if they get another one today then you build in the offseason and of course uh, today it doesn't get any easier for the Huskies. Dan Nicholson, their starting quarterback, is out. He suffered a concussion last week in the win over Kent State. Sophomore Ryan Morris gets the start today. Yeah, Nicholson's the heart and emotional leader of that offense. Ryan Morris, only a sophomore. Tough spot, big shoes to fill. But how do you take care of a young quarterback? You have to be able to run the football. And looking at Justin Anderson, their tailback, he can do it. He's already eclipsed the 1,000 mark yard on the season. It's the ninth straight time an NIU player has done that. This guy can carry it. He can catch it. He can block. They need to get him at least 35 touches. He's averaging almost five yards a carry. He's got to have a big day if the Huskies have a chance to win this game. All right. Paul Johnson spent a lot of time with that Navy D. We'll see if it works today. It's Navy and Northern Illinois next on CSTV.
Never fly from Spalding. True to the game. Watch the NCAA Division I Field Hockey Championship tomorrow at noon, only on CSTV. Enjoy the most college hoops in the nation on ESPN Full Court from DirecTV. With key matchups from some of college basketball's top conferences, ESPN Full Court takes it to the hoop with up to 30 games per week from outside your local area. Special early bird offer, only two payments of $49.50 each. Order by November 23rd and save $10 off the regular price. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or log on to directtv.com slash full court. ESPN Full Court from DirecTV. My name is Kelly Alexander, and I won the DirecTV Home Free Sweepstakes. We were moving from L.A. to Virginia. And now DirecTV is paying our rent for an entire year. Mm -hmm. All we had to do was call Movers Connection before we moved, and they took care of everything else. We literally just unplugged the receiver, grabbed the remote, and that was it. And it was completely free and really easy. Call DirecTV prior to your move, and you could be living rent or mortgage free for an entire year. I do miss the L.A. weather. But we never miss writing that rent check. Yeah, we won. Woo! It's held every four years. Europe's biggest tournament, European Championship 2008 qualifiers. Follow the three Lions as one of the most talented squads in Europe, boasting world-class superstars. Terry, Gerard, and Lampard fight their way through qualifying for a claim of the right to be Europe's best. Cheer England on their road to Austria and Switzerland 2008. Team England European Championship 2008 qualifiers. Live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. CSTV Football Nation is brought to you by BF Goodrich. BF Goodrich tires take control. And by Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. Welcome back to Annapolis. Paul Johnson, who uh, took over a program that was winless before he got here, won two games his first year last week, wrapping up his fifth consecutive bowl bid here in Annapolis, 43 and 29 now, just under 60% in his sixth season in Annapolis. On the opposite sideline, Joe Novak, a guy who did a rebuilding job of his own at Northern Illinois. Three wins the first two seasons, and now 12 years later, he has had a great success at Northern Illinois, turning things around. Won three of his first 33 there. The administration was patient, and he stuck by him and put it together a winning football program. Great day here in Annapolis. There you see the midshipmen on hand, senior day. Joey Bullen, one of those seniors on it before the game, getting ready to kick off for Navy. Back deep. Evan Tadonis for Northern Illinois. He takes it at the four. Underway in Annapolis, back up to the 15, 25, decrease 25, up to the 30-yard line, taken down by Darius Terry on the special teams for Navy. First and 10 coming up for NIU with sophomore Ryan Morris getting the start at quarterback, Scott. Yeah, and it's a tough spot for him to commit to. His team needs another win. Nice job last week against Kent State, but that was Dan Nicholson's game. He had a big day. You got to be able to run the football, and they got a big one in Justin Anderson. So he's just got to manage the game today, Pete. Not make the big mistake and don't force the football. Sophomore from Carroll Stream, Illinois, played at West Chicago High School. Tight end to the right side. Twins to the top. And again, to Anderson on first down, off the left side. Gets up near the 34-yard line. It'll be a gain of four, second and six. Take a look at the offensive lineup for Northern Illinois. Acevedo, Scatrid, Adamski, Anyabago, and Brost. And the skill people, Anderson, just a sophomore. Beal and Beckner substitute tight ends today. Simon and Britt Davis are the wide receivers, all underclassmen as well for Northern Illinois. Wide receivers coached by one of Northern Illinois' greatest, P.J. Fleck. Single set back again as Anderson. Gets the call coming left side, up to the 35. Mospisil hits him right there up near the 38. It'll be third and two. The Navy defense up front. Three guys that have played most of the year. Kuhar, Pitters, Frazier, and Walsh. Linebackers, Bella, Haber, Spencer, and Wimsett. And in the secondary, King back from injury. Middleton, Buffin also back from injury, and Carter. Right now, though, Kevin Edwards is on that left corner for Navy. Sean King did practice some this week. And it's Greg Thrasher at safety as well. And third and two. Morris under pressure. Rolling to his right. Throws it to the sideline. And if he's got it, it's a great catch. The referees are going to say no. 
And now they're going to say yes. One referee down here to the left. The line judge initially waved incomplete. But then the field judge came in and conferred with him. And they say he's got the catch at the 49. Great play here by Ryan Moore, Scott. Yeah, good job off the play, Ashley. Look at big Nate Frazier coming up the middle right there. Forces him outside the pocket. Little play fake, play fake right there. And look at the job tiptoeing on the outside. And that's sometimes what you got to do. You know, you got to hang in there, wait till that last possible second, absorb the hit, and make the throw. A heck of a catch by Matt Simon on the sideline. First and 10 for Northern Illinois, just short of the 50-yard line. And now the umpire comes in. Perhaps this play is now going to be under review. Play is being reviewed. So they will go upstairs. It's a Mac officiating crew with the technical advisor today from the ACC, Rosie Amato. Take a look at a couple of the shots that we have here on the replay. Yeah, all you got to do is watch Matt Simon's left foot. It's down right there. The right foot also looks like it's down at that time. Does he maintain possession going down? Looks like the right's in. It's almost like he gets two feet in, Pete. That's you only need one at this level. He's got the tippy toes of both feet in bounds. That is just a sensational grab. And again, as they've been on it all season yeah. long, tremendous work by our camera crew, giving us a great look at it right there. Lights out by those guys. And Matt Simon, one of those guys we talked to this week, who was concerned with moving the sticks. And if that was going to be the case, if Dan Nicholson was going to be out, he says, hey, we got confidence in the, the young guy, Ryan Morris, the sophomore. We just need to help him. We need to catch it. We need to move, move the sticks, run it, play action, pass them. And that's a good way to get your young quarterback going early in the game. He takes a hit. He takes a great hit, but he puts the ball only where his guy can get it. Yep. It's a great that's grab by Simon. It's 41st of the year. Simon averaging just under 20 yards per catch for the Huskies. So he's been a big play guy in their air game this year. Again, now, as they talk about it, the line judge was the guy that was up the sideline. He initially put his hands across his chest and waved no good and the field judge came in and conferred with him and then they changed the call. And it looks like it's the right thing because that was a great catch by Simon. It's like Paul Johnson a little grumpy. Hey, that's a pretty big cushion over there on that right side. Key third down. You get that stop right there. Boom. You get that defense who's struggled. Let's face it. Last couple weeks. You look at what North Texas did to them. They need to get off the field early. After review. Video confirmed. The call to the field. The player cut possessed the ball inbound. First down. Referee Stan Evans giving us uh, the word. And certainly Paul Johnson not happy about that. But that's the one thing that has killed Navy all year. Scott defensively not able to get off the field on third down. Northern Illinois electing to throw on third and two going away from what would be their strength on the ground. And they're able to pick it up. Yeah, and third down efficiency for the Navy defense. They're giving up 53% on the year. That's not good. Out of the gun, Morris throws. Check down underneath. Complete down near the 46-yard line. Making the catch, Marcus Lewis, a sophomore, Gurney, Illinois. Second down and five upcoming for Northern Illinois. So already two throws from Northern Illinois for the new quarterback, Ryan Morris. Trying to get him into the game. There you see Dan Nicholson, who, of course, went out of the game last week late with a concussion. And the 27-20 went over Kent State. Wild year in the MAC, that's for sure. Here's Morris. His pass off the hands of Lewis, and that's just the ball right there, Scott. That Lewis has got to come up with the first quarter. Right yeah, but the, the, the thing there, too, and, and these are the things that, that, that Morris is going to learn. You know, help your guys catch the ball, meaning there's times you want to drill it, and, you know, you put a little too much mustard on that ball right there. He checked off to this. He saw a nice cushion, but, I mean, he fires this ball. You know, sometimes you just have to guide it. If the guy's wide open, that's short a pass, but he'll learn from that. Those are the things that he just needs to play in time. They need to get just inside the 41 for a first down. Third down and five. First possession of the game. Simon in motion to the bottom of the formation. Morris, slight roll to the right, throws. Simon on the slant. Got it from a Kevin Edwards, and he breaks the tackle. He's at the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown at Simon in Northern Illinois. Exotic formations early in this first drive for Northern Illinois. Paul Johnson expecting them to come out big, but you look at it, Matt Morris, easy right here, boom. Hits Simon in stride, and that's just poor tackling on the outside. And this is the thing that's so frustrating for defensive coordinator Buddy Green is they're not blowing coverages. They have guys in position to make the play. You just got to make the tackle. And the extra point 
is good by Nendick. One away for Ryan Morris to get his first touchdown. It puts Northern Illinois on top here in Annapolis on CSTV. the blue one. You don't get to the top of your game by making dumb decisions. So choose the tire that sets records, wins championships, and controls the competition from start to finish. tires take control it's Bobby Bowden statue hold your breath until we pass it <laughs> hey Bobby Bowden statue so lifelike dude get him do you have accident forgiveness Call all state to sign up today. Are you in good hands? Back in Annapolis, more of the same from the Navy D. A missed tackle helps Northern Illinois to a 7 0 lead here. 12 48 to go first quarter. Sophomore quarterback Ryan Morris with his first touchdown pass of the season. A 46 yarder to Matt Simon. Completes a 70 yard drive. Two minutes, 12 seconds. And Simon's earlier catch where he tiptoed the sideline on a key third down conversion for the Huskies. So four looks like, like they're intent to get Simon the football and that's the way you get your young quarterback going that's confidence first drive you take it down you score you make a guy miss break a play and would maybe at some point defensively they need to get off the field. It's not going to happen overnight. An ending on the kickoff Reggie Campbell bobbles at the 10 picks it up ahead to the 20 25 30 can he get outside he jumps over Nendick who trips him up. Reggie Campbell returned a free kick last week for a touchdown trying to bring Navy his first kickoff return in over a decade and he's just tripped up by Nendick. Now the key here is he drops the football sometimes when you see that you call it a muff it almost helps you in the return game because it, there's a little second delay when the defender sees that you guys get the block and if you could just find that one crease and that's a game no, not a game saver but that's a touchdown saving cap tackle by the kicker. Adam Ballard the senior on first down with a start today gets to midfield a gain of four second down and six and for Navy today the junior product out of Hoover Alabama Jared Bryant gets the starting quarterback today time to step in and that's the big thing with him we've seen him in spots this year but there's also been turnovers in key situations he's also set up game winning drives he needs to protect the football today Pete for Navy second down and six a quick pitch coming near side Shun White White across midfield down near the 40 yard line he'll have a first down for Navy. Let's take a look at the guys up front who plow the road for this rushing offense. Number one in the nation, Josh Meek, Anthony Gaskins, Antron Harper, Ben Gabbard, and Paul Bridgers. The skilled people, Adam Ballard, Reggie Campbell, Thurban Singleton, Tyree Barnes, and O.J. Washington. First down at the 40-yard line. Mids trying to answer the Northern Illinois touchdown. Bryant on the option. Pitches to White. Cuts it inside. Gets it down to the 33 yard line gain of seven second down and three upcoming on the defensive side of the football for Northern Illinois Good a shuttle system there Perkle gets his start today Vice crutch and English the outstanding defensive end join him up front Allen Larson Tranchantella in the linebacker spots in the secondary Rice Kuba is their leading tackler Pruitt and Carter. There you see Larry English had an outstanding season. Plowing forward, Ballard breaks out of a tackle inside the 20. Down to the 13-yard line. He'll have a, a Navy first down. Touchdown saving tackle by junior Josh Allen for NIU. And it's not good when your free safety is the leading tackler on your defensive team. It's just an easy little dive for the fullback. Ballard just picks the legs up, puts them down. 
And when you have your safeties, as I said, you're clearing that first line of defenders. You get through the defensive line of the backers, it's not a good sign. On the option, Bryant. Serving Singleton gets up to the eight yard line. It'll be a gain of five. It'll bring up second down and five yards to go. Talking to Denny Dornbus this week, the defensive coordinator who was at Army and has played against Paul Johnson. He's seen the triple option attack before, but he said, you know, it's never easy, and especially when you're dealing with as many injuries. They've been decimated defensively with Bice and English, the only two guys up front that have started every game for them. You need to stay in assignments, and it's not like they see this option every day in practice. It's tough to do, tough to defend. Quick pitch coming left side. Shun White down to the six. It'll bring up a third down and three. You need to get to the three-yard line for a first down. So we haven't even reached uh, the first five minutes of this ball game. Navy on the verge of scoring. They're at the five. Sure. Typical Navy football. As we said, Scott, we have had some of the most exciting games in college football uh, with this Navy team on CSTV this year. Lots of offense. If you like it, they bring it to the table. Bryant with a long count. Still six on the play clock. Singleton in motion. Follows Ballard through the hole. Chopped down at the three-yard line. Going to be close to a first down. Alex Crutch, the junior, with a tackle for Northern Illinois. We'll see where they spot it. It's going to be very, very close to the first down. Unusual to have a long snap count there. We don't usually see that out of either quarterback, whether it's Kaipo or whether it's Jared Bryant. And they're going to measure and see if they did get the first down. And that's the big thing. We talked to Paul Johnson. There's not a lot of check with me's built into this offense, meaning they're going to audible. But it's just an easy fullback dive. Brian almost would have been better pitching the ball right there because you have both defensive outside backers crashing down. Adam Ballard with a block to spring him there. And it looks like they're going to have the first down. They do. So it'll be first and goal for Navy. Perhaps Jared Bryant, because of the down and distance there, goes to the longer count, maybe trying to catch an inexperienced Northern Illinois defense, maybe jumping offside, a guy maybe anxious trying to make a play there in that situation. But you're right, usually when Navy comes in line of scrimmage, they don't really fool around too much. Especially down inside the five. I mean, he had one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with O.J. Washington, and you rarely see Navy check to the pass down here in this situation. They just usually try and run it down your throat. On first and goal, it's Ballard. Getting down to the one. And last week's got a ton of rushing touchdowns. And that's a big thing. We talked to them this week. Down 21 to 3. Did you change anything offensively? No, what was the answer? We stayed with the game plan. Paul Johnson said he just kept emphasizing stick with it. Something's going to pop. Stay on your game. Stay on your keys. Don't look at the scoreboard. And sure enough, 29 straight unanswered points in the second quarter. He says you can't come from behind with the option offense. Jared Bryant following Ballard through the hole, diving forward. No signal yet. Both the headlinesman and the line judge coming in, and they're going to put up three fingers, meaning third and goal. It's a big defensive series right here for Northern Illinois. And, and you take a look at the side angle. Look at the movement underneath, meaning pad under pad, and that's the key right now. They're lower than the Navy offensive line. In these situations, you kind of got a submarine, no pun intended, but you got to get under the guy to get him in the end zone. Brian, quick pitch, right side, Singleton running for the flag, and he's in for the touchdown, Navy. Time and time again, we've seen this Navy football team answer the call if the defense, which they've been doing, is giving up that first score. How do they re how do they respond? They come down, quick little pitch, and that's what I'm talking about. The quick snap count, catch the defense off, off guard, and get Singleton on the corner. Serban Singleton, the sixth touchdown of the season. Joey Bullen for the point after. And another shootout is underway here in Annapolis. Eight and a half to go. First quarter tied at seven on CSTV. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels from rock to pop, hip hop to country, all 100% commercial free. Get the best sports like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio.
Kari Rigg is a real Geico customer, not a paid celebrity. So to help tell her story, we hired Peter Frampton. My car was totally smashed in an accident. Not a great way to start the morning. And the tow truck that the police called damaged it even more. I wanted to pull my hair out. Geico handled everything quick and easy. It felt great. Do you feel like I do? Geico. Real service, real savings. All right, villains. If we ever hope to get rid of Shrek, we're gonna need some practice. We need a target. Seize him! Now I've got you. Oh. Get it! Get a free Shrek fairy tale with specially marked packages of Energizer Max batteries. Energizer keeps going and going. Welcome back to Annapolis. Football Nation, the place to be today. If you like scoring, looks like it's going to be another shootout. Mid to Northern Illinois, 7 7. The Navy scoring drive. 10 plays, 54 yards. Serving singleton. Caps a four minute, 18 second drive for the home team to get even here at 7. Courtesy of Reggie Campbell, setting him up with a short field. Reggie Campbell, one of the many seniors. And this Navy senior class wins out. Only the 1909 group has won the most games of any senior class, but certainly as the modern era plays along, this senior group could have the highest win total. You really start to see the numbers from Campbell now, who kind of got off to a slow start through the first three games. Adonis from the 10. Chopped down at the 20 yard line by Wyatt Middleton on special teams. Outstanding open field play for Navy. CSTV would like to extend a very special welcome to service women and servicemen around the world watching today's game on the American Forces Network. We appreciate all that you're doing to defend our great country. We see some future defenders of our country right there. Naval Academy midshipman Ryan Morris. In relief of Dan Nicholson out with a concussion today. A touchdown pass on his first drive for Northern Illinois. From the 21-yard line, it's Anderson. Stutter steps one way and Ram Vela greets him in the backfield. It'll be a loss of two, second and 12. Scott, as we mentioned, that 1909 group, they must have been pretty good. 36 wins, and you see 2007 last year's bunch with 35. And this 2008 group can get to that 36 mark if they win today, beat Army, and then win in the bowl game. And that's amazing, something to be proud of because a lot of these kids come here, you know, obviously for the education and how they're going to serve our great country. And not just to play football, they do it to have fun. Anderson, stutter steps right side. Wimsat greets him in the hole. Up to the 23, gain of four. It'll bring up third down and eight. Matt Wimsat has had an outstanding year, and he's one of the guys that has survived the attrition on that defensive side for Navy Scott. Yeah, and he's been a, he's been a stalwart throughout this season. And you know, every time we talk to Buddy Green, you know, that's the name that pops up. Obviously, Irv Spencer, big leader on this defense, but you can't ignore what he's done. And of course, his brother who played here, and he did one of the flyovers in one of the earlier games this year, another big kid, uh, former Navy captain. Wimsat, one of four guys to start all the games on that defense. Morris trying to convert another third down. He's under pressure, and he's taken down from behind. Matt Nishak, we're checking Michael Walsh, 38, gets the stop. Just as he did, helping out for the big stop at Notre Dame. Walsh with a big play here on third down. This is a, you look at the top of your screen, it's a great push right there that you get from Irv Spencer on the backside, which opens that up for Walsh. Now, Walsh just had to sit right there, wait, and just react. That's good reaction, good reading, and you need that up front. If you're having problems in the secondary, the secondary has been ravaged by injuries. They've got to get pressure other ways. They need to be creative, and that first comes off the edge. Reggie Campbell stands and waits for the end over end kick comes to get it at the 47 eludes the first guy up the middle into northern Illinois territory at the 44 yard line. Brandon Beal down on special teams for northern Illinois to make the stop but again Navy with great field position coming up. Mids get a defensive stop back to the offense in a moment on CSTV.
Wouldn't it be great if you could carry all your favorite family photos with you in an album that's the size of a credit card? Well, now you can. Introducing Wallet Picks, the world's thinnest digital photo album that lets you carry all your favorite photos right in your pocket. Look, it's the size of a credit card, yet it holds over 50 of your favorite photos. Perfect for carrying your favorite family and vacation photos, special occasion shots, pictures of your children or grandchildren. Just think, over 50 of your favorite photos right here in this pocket-sized digital photo album. That's easy to take with you. There's even a built-in stand and a slideshow feature that changes the photos automatically so you can proudly display your photos or fill one with all your favorite photos and send it off to someone special for the gift that everyone will enjoy. So why leave all your favorite photos at home when now it's easy to take them with you with Wallet Picks for just two easy payments of $19.99. You'll also receive the USB cable for downloading your photos and our Lux carrying case, a $30 value, yours free. But call right now and we'll double the offer and give you two Wallet Picks digital albums, two carrying cases, two USB cables, and our 60 day money back guarantee. All for just two payments of $19.99. But you have to call now. To order Wallet Picks, have your credit card ready and call 1 800 208 7181. That's 1 800 208 7181. Call now. One of the missing ingredients for the Navy offense today, starting quarterback Kaimanoa Kaheaku in Hata. 755 yards, 11 touchdowns on the season. There you see his numbers overall. Passing game has been a bad year throwing the football. Well, the long runs have been the big thing with him. It's not just, the, you know, he's ripping these short runs off and it adds up over time. His ability to take it to the house from 80, as long as we're a touchdown run of the year, obviously 80 yards, uh, he could strike at any time, but it's a matter of time before he was going to get beat up. Quick pitch right side, Serbin Singleton. Gain of eight on the play. Tranchitella with a stop for Northern Illinois. And there you see uh, Kaipo very into the ball game. Big supporter of Jared Bryant. Says Bryant's one of the guys that has helped him become a better passer this year. And you see right there, he's the fourth leading ground gainer of all the rushing quarterbacks uh, in the country. Pretty good group up there, especially with Mr. White from West Virginia. Very dynamic. Yeah. So it brings up second down and two. All at the 42 yard line. White goes in motion. And again, the quick pitch that side. And White finds the corner inside the 30. Down to the 28 yard line. Zach Larson on the stop for Northern Illinois. Also, Melvin Rice in on the bottom of the pile, but not before Navy gets another first down. This is a really good job by Jared Bryant protecting the football. And that's something I said in the open. It almost hits the fullback, Katani. He had to double clutch it. At times, you have to read. Maybe it's better off if I just eat it right here and don't take the loss in case there's a fumble. But he thought he could get the pitch with to him. He continued with the pitch. And that's a good decision by Jared Bryant right there. Maybe already cranking out the rushing yardage. This time, it's the fullback up the middle. Katani to the 30 or making the 27 yard line, maybe down to the 26. Be a gain of two, brings up second down and eight yards to go. Now, Kaipo and Brian are different players. I mean, it's easy to say that this offense does not skip a beat because they don't. They still have efficiency in the option attack, but Brian's a little bit more of a, a compact runner, seems to be able to absorb the hit a little more. You know, we were talking about it before the game where. Kaipo's a little taller, a little more lanky, and a little more susceptible to that big hit. Coming back to the quick pitch, right side. Singleton runs out of a tackle down the sideline. He's tripped up, but not before. He gets into the end zone for a touchdown, Navy. Zerbin Singleton for the second time today, and that's seventh of the season. To give Navy a lead. It's another guy really catching fire now. Helped to spring the big comeback last week against North Texas with the big run. It's some, something different when you get him and Reggie Campbell out on the corner in that slot position. When they put these guys in motion and give them that little, little pitch of the ball, they can get it to the corner. Joey Bullen adds the extra point. Singleton, White, and Campbell have been in business in the slots. Here's another Navy touchdown. And that's the motion, but look at the blocking out front. One guy getting cut down. You see Big Antron Harper the center outside trying to lead the way. Watch how Navy pulls people. You see Gaskins moving to the front. Josh Meek on the outside. 
Singleton steps through that last tackler. Look at Reggie Campbell's That's one of the block. great attributes for a runner is not looking back, having trust in yourself to keep your eyes focused upfield. The second you look back, that's when you slow up and the guy can make a play on you. Durbin Singleton, a great young man, young man who overcame a lot of hardships uh, as a child in terms of his upbringing, and uh, as a result, maybe uh, honing in on an opportunity. He wants to be in the astronaut program, and his schedule daily is something that a lot of college students don't have to go through this, Mr. Zolak. Well, I had that when I was in Maryland. I mean, you know, the yeah. wake up and the sleep thing, I think, were the two things. say, where did you have formation at at 7 a.m., Route 1? But it's, you know, we talk to these kids each and every week, and they take the time to talk to us as we try and formulate our notes and points throughout the, for, for the upcoming game. But you don't realize how much time and effort that they put into the school. And, you know, coming to these academies, it's, it's a different life. It's not the normal student-athlete life that you have at other institutions. Nominated for the Orange Bowl Student-Athlete Award, Adonis, or check it, on the return, breaking the initial tackle. Is, it is Adonis, Evans Adonis. They fake the reverse. He then tried to reverse his field. And Corey Johnson, the former hoopster here at Navy, not buying it. Chance to tell you a little bit more here about Zerbin Singleton. Big transfer from Georgia Tech. Little guy, but he could get up as you see the, the leaping ability. And he was just in on that tackle. So he, he not only does he run the touchdown in, gets two touchdowns, he's got to line up and go cover kicks. More you can do. So Northern Illinois to the offense now at the 14 yard line, first and 10. Coming down to the four and a half minute mark. Out pattern complete down to the 22 yard line. Be a gain of eight on first down for Northern Illinois. Making the stop, Marcus Lewis. Making the catch rather, Marcus Lewis. We'll bring him a second down, and Morris looking good on that throw right there. Yeah, Ryan Morris getting off to the fast start. This is a key time in the game for him. They were up early. Now all of a sudden, Navy responds with two short fields, two quick scores. All of a sudden, he's down seven. And that's the big thing that Roy Whitkey, offense coordinator, needs to convey to him is we're going to continue to be patient. And I like the approach they're taking, throwing the short stuff to get him involved early in his football game. Whitkey was at Arizona State last year. Off the right side, it's Anderson. He's got a first down across the 25, up near the 28-yard line. It'll be a Northern Illinois first down. And Scott, this guy just a sophomore, but he looks like he is ready to line up with the other great ones that Joe Novak has produced here in Northern Illinois. Oh, you talk about Michael the burner Turner and, and guys like Garrett Wolf and talking to Justin Anderson this week. He's almost averaging five yards a carry. He said Garrett Wolf has helped him. He's, the big thing is you need to make that first guy miss, just like we saw right there, that last run. He gets up to the line, sets up the defender, waits for the second guy to come and makes that first guy miss. And around, Simon coming near side, 30, takes a hit right there from Blake Carter and Ross Pospisil. Not before he gets up near the 33-yard line. It'll be a gain of five, second down and five. Where they're really mixing things up. Watch on the right side of your screen. Britt Davis comes in for the big shot right there, which helps his counterpart, Simon, to pick up some yards. There's the crack back. Just like you see with Navy, their wide receivers known for great blocking that time. Davis helping out his runner there. It's Anderson through the hole. Met at the 35-yard line up near the 36. It'll bring up a third down and two yards to go. Irv Spencer standing him up in the hole. You see Justin Anderson joining Garrett Wolf, Michael Turner, Thomas Hammock, William Andrews. Ironically, Joe Novak today he goes, man, he goes, Michael Turner could be a great back in the National Football League if he could ever get out of San Diego in the shadow of LaDainian Tomlinson. And we talked about that, and you know, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword there. I mean, you know, he is extending his career also because he's playing behind the LT, he's being well paid. Sometimes you go elsewhere, you carry the, carry the rock too much, you, you get beat, beat up, up, and next thing you know, you're out of the league in four years. Third and two. Anderson, left side, sees the hole, gets close to the first down. And it looks like he's got it. Spot on the far side has him at the 39-yard line, and that would be good enough for the Northern Illinois first down. That's the tough thing when you run a single back offense. You don't have the ability to follow a fullback. And you look at the triple option. They fake the ball to the fullback. Then you get on the outside. You have your slot back you pitch it to. You have all eight defenders up front in that box keying on that one guy. And when Justin Anderson pops off some of these big runs, it's amazing up here when you look at the game from up high 
the footwork of this kid and how he picks him up and puts him down. Morse on first down. On the right side with Anderson. Walsh gets the first contact for Navy, but not before hey, Anderson hey, across hey. the 40, up near the 42 hey, yard hey, line. Hey, four, hey, second hey, and six. We already talked about Ryan Morrison approaching this drive when it started. You look at it now, they've already moved the sticks, and you see how quick Navy can score, especially if the defense isn't playing well, you give them a short field. Even if they don't come away with points here, if you get a 60, 70 yard drive, you take seven minutes off the clock, that's helping your defense. Those guys on the sideline get their win and keep that score down. Gives you a chance. Second and seven from the 42. Anderson tripped up by Chris Kuhar and Pitters. Lost possible solo for in the neighborhood again. Possible solo already in on six stops for the shipment. It's just short of the 45. It'll bring up third down and four yards to go. Possible and Walsh very active today. Uh, not the two guys that we've seen, you know, making the big stops up front early in football games. It's usually guys like uh, Irv Spencer, Nate Frazier. We've seen White Middleton come down from the secondary. He's leading the team in tackles defensively. Another opportunity on third down here for Northern Illinois. Morris back to throw in the slant pattern. It's caught at midfield. That's a great grab. It'll be a first down as Lewis, who had one sailed through his hands earlier with Edwards draped all over his back, makes the grab, and it's a first down Northern Illinois. Offensive coordinator Roy Whitkey has seen something here. You know, Kevin Edwards giving that cushion out there. They've been going after number 15 throughout the first quarter of this football game, and it's just a simple button hook route, and that's a great job by Morris. And we talked about it earlier how he really overthrew and, and put too much mustard on the one ball to the left kind of guides that one right into the numbers, helps his receiver out, so he's learning. Morris, five of six for 74 yards. Anderson on the quick hitter, left side. It's down to the 47. It'll bring up second down and seven. It's the first quarter clock winding down here in Annapolis, and that is likely the last play of our first quarter. Northern Illinois, four, five, down, third down conversions. The clock will run out. Here in Annapolis, end of one quarter play. It's Navy 14, Northern Illinois 7. Back with more on CSTV. It's the season to shop, and the red tags are coming back for the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag event. And right now, they're bringing the best values of the season. Look for the red tag and get 0% financing for 60 months on remaining 2007 Pontiac, Buick, and GMC models. That's 0% financing for five full years on all 2007 cars, light duty trucks, and SUVs while supplies last. The Red Tag Event. See some red, save some green. When you put up a fat head, you're making a statement too big for words. A statement like this. <laughs> Maybe you need something more. How about the NFL, NBA, MLB, NASCAR? If you can think of a sports-related acronym, we probably got a fat head for you. The biggest names and moments captured at the height of intensity, plucked from the playing field like ripened fruit that can smack you in your ear hole. Nice work, fellas. Hall of Famers, ex-gamers, QB sackers, revitalized Packers, I'm starting to rhyme and I like it. Fat head. A passion that's been building and building, so put it in your building. Get your favorite fatheads from the NFL, plus MLB, NBA, NASCAR, and more. Go to fathead.com now. Enjoy the most college hoops in the nation on ESPN Full Court from DirecTV. With key matchups from some of college basketball's top conferences, ESPN Full Court takes it to the hoop with up to 30 games per week from outside your local area. Special early bird offer, only two payments of $49.50 each. Order by November 23rd and save $10 off the regular price. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or log on to directtv.com slash full court. ESPN Full Court from DirecTV. Back in Annapolis, this time last week, Navy was trailing North Texas 21-10. Today, they lead Northern Illinois 14-7, but the Huskies on the move in a Navy territory right now, facing a second and seven. 
at the 47 yard line. Pete Medhurst, Scott Zolak, glad to have you with us on CSTV. Morris looking to screen it out in the flat. He's got Anderson at the 45, tripped up there by Greg Thrasher down to the 44. It'll bring up third down and four. Northern Illinois been busy in the second quarter. 81 of their 184 overall in the second quarter of play. An impressive opening drive here. And right now on the move, four or five on third downs uh, before this one, Scott. And that's a good quick decision by Ryan Morris on that last play. Sets up a more manageable third and three here. They need to get the tip of the ball to the 40. Morris back to throw. Flushed a little bit. Under pressure, and he's going to go down. And it's Matt Winsad with first contact to the backfield again for Navy. And it'll bring up a fourth down. These are some of the problems with the young quarterback. Thinks he feels the pressure. You look at the pocket. That's a nice pocket. He moves to his left. He didn't have to do that. He should have stepped up and to the right. Right there. I mean, he had no pressure coming up the middle. No reason to slide left or right right there. Just be patient. Sit in the pocket. But don't tell them that on the sideline. You talk to them. Keep them in the game. More importantly, they moved the sticks there and took some time off the clock. Did Benner scoops up a low snap. Good kick. Campbell. Fair catch called for at the 10 yard line. That's where Navy will go on offense with a first and 10. Fans, show your love for the midshipmen, the Huskies, or any of your teams this holiday season. Get your butt in gear. Fanstore.com with everything from shirts and hats to pennants, decals, and much more. Go to fanstore.com now. Or at least wait until the commercial comes up. Take your time in between. You do both. Drives. Yeah, well, that is true. It's a modern drive. Yeah, put a TV right next to the computer. I've got a TV next to my computer in my den. I can do the same thing. Jared Bryant back on now. There you see Keith Jones talking to his linebackers who've done an outstanding job here in this first half for Navy. Wims had to help get the sack there. Jared Bryant to the belly of Adam Ballard, the fullback. He gets up to the 15, gain of five, and to bring up second down and five. Interested to see how this defense responds right here for Northern Illinois. They've had to play with the short field. You're looking at Larry English, their big defensive end. He and Bice on the bookends, the only two guys that start every game for this injury ravaged defense. He's got five sacks in one game. 63 tackles for Larry English this year, nine and a half sacks, 16 tackles for a loss. He's a pretty good football player. Here's Bryant through the hole. Dives forward up near the 17. It'll bring up second down, or third down rather. And three yards to go. Bice also went on 34 stops this year. Those are the only two guys that have played in all the games for Northern Illinois. When we talked to Larry English this week, he said one of the first words out of his mouth was health. He felt fortunate to be one of the guys to be out there on the field each and every day. And you could see he's maybe missed what seven plays, seven snaps that's this a year lot defensively. Of football to be playing. At Maybe. this point in the year, that's a lot of football. You're right, Pete. Ryan and Ballard miscommunication there. The late pitch to Campbell, a flag thrown from the umpire, a disastrous third down play here for Navy. We'll see what the flag is all about, but you got to feel that yeah. comes from the area of holding. Northern Illinois will decline it and force a fourth down. That's got to be a hold, and that would be a big stop for the Husky defense. Jared Bryan almost got in trouble there. We talked about how he needs to protect the football. In this, in this offense, you make that decision and you go with it. You can't ride the fullback, ride the fullback, pull it out. He almost had that pitch deflected. Illegal block for the waste. On the offense, number 26, the penalty is declined. The result of the play is fourth down. And there you see Jared Bryant getting an earful from Paul Johnson. The illegal block called on Shun White. You see how he rides Adam Ballard. Now, whether that's Adam Ballard's fault or not, a lot of that responsibility is put on the fullback. They clamp down on the football when they think it's given to them. And that's just a little bit of maybe not having a right feel for the quarterback. You're used to Kaipo, you know, carrying out that play fake. Veneto for his 13th punt of the season in game number 11. That's it's it. A low squibber. Bounces on the ground. Simon picks it up. Gets a couple of extra yards on the play. Senior third string quarterback Troy Gawson with Reggie Campbell on the tackle. Navy leads at 14 7. Huskies with great field position when we come back on CSTV. The finest leather boots are at Big Bill's Boots. <laughs>
This is you after an energy drink. Unfortunately, so is this. Why do energy drinks make you crash? One minute you're wired up, the next you feel worse than before. The answer is large amounts of sugar and caffeine. That's why you should try a new liquid energy shot called 5-Hour Energy. With 5-Hour Energy, you can leave grogginess behind and sail through your day without feeling jittery, tense, or you know. That's because 5-Hour Energy contains a powerful blend of B vitamins for energy, amino acids for focus and better mood, and enzymes to help you feel it faster. There's zero sugar, about as much caffeine as a cup of coffee, and only 8 calories. The 2-ounce shot takes just seconds to drink, and in minutes you're feeling awake, alert, and productive. And that feeling lasts for hours. So if your energy drink makes you crash, switch to 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. Find out if 5-Hour Energy is right for you. It's available at these fine stores. Or for more information, go to 5-HourEnergy.com. Bill the Goat, the Naval Academy football mascot. Enjoying it on the sidelines. Proud of these four guys. They've lasted on this defense all season long. The only players to start every game. Irv Spencer, the team's leading tackler, with 71 coming in. Matt Wimsat, third on the squad with 67. Walsh and Frazier with big plays in the win over Notre Dame. Wimsat and Spencer, of course, seniors. And Morris hands to Anderson on first down. He gets inside the 40, down to the 39. Gain of five on first down, second and five. Scott, you played this game at this level, and how, just how difficult is it for a guy to, to last in this game? You know, this, is, this is a tough game. And those guys, for the most part, are probably undersized compared it's, to some of the other D1 foes. It's a different physical way. When you look at the skill guys, the guys on the outside, running backs and receivers, your lower legs, they get tired 10th game of the season. Those guys in the trenches, you know, they're hitting, they're, they're getting joints broken in their fingers. They play through pain each and every day, not only out here on Saturdays, but every day in practice. Anderson tripped up by Wyatt Middleton, who, like Spencer, had 71 tackles coming in. And just like we talked to Paul Johnson this week, he's really geared practice back, and it's taking care of the legs of guys. And that's why you do it, because you look at it right here. Big Nate Frazier gets good penetration. Irv Spencer inside. You know, he's not involved in the tackle right here, but you're flying around, your body's hitting the ground, and there he comes in right there at the end. Middleton also up there in tackle, 71 coming into the game today. Middleton has done a solid job, pressed into duty after injuries to defensive captain Jeff DeLiz at the start of the year. Third and three coming up here for Northern Illinois. Morris with a deep drop, steps up in the pocket, throws underneath, and it's broken up by Irv Spencer, trailing the wide receiver, Britt Davis, across the middle. And Navy's defense again comes up with a third down stop. Yeah, one, it's a good job by Morris sitting in the pocket here. He shows the patience. And they do a good job blocking up front. They've helped him with formations, but put that football out in front. He had Davis coming open underneath. That's a mismatch. You got a receiver on an inside linebacker, lay it out in front. And I like the call right here. What do you have to lose? The two and eight right now. You go out, you make a play, you're on the road. Fourth and four for Northern Illinois. They need to get to the 39. Morris is back to throw. He's got some pressure. Dumps it underneath. Big hole open up for Anderson. He's at the 30. Down to the 25. Walsh finally runs him down at the 24-yard line. That's a great call by Roy Whitkey, offensive coordinator. Now on the flip side, if you're Navy, you've got to kind of be expected something like that. If you're getting some pressure, young quarterback in there, they're not going to ask him to sit in there and make a big throw. You take care of it. Great job setting his feet, drawing the defenders, wait till the last second to get the ball out to Anderson, and Anderson just sets up the blockers. Nice job. Watch the feet here by Morris. Waits, 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 and there's the little flip. That's easy. Here's Anderson, the workhorse here. Already was with his 13th carry of the day. And Scott, you mentioned before the game, what do you do to keep the pressure off of Morris? You give it to a guy like Anderson already putting in his hands. He's had the ball now 15 times, either running or catching so far. And when we talked to the Navy coaches earlier this week, they were concerned about how much they were going to run it, and they were concerned with the tight end formations. 12 and 13 personnel, meaning two tight ends, three tight ends in the game. We have not seen that from Northern Illinois. I really like the exotic formation. You see both tight ends flipping on both sides of the line of scrimmage right there. One of them in the slot. Now the draw play to Anderson. Left side. Tackled by Michael Walsh. And Irv Spencer. It'll bring up a third down and six. Justin Anderson. 
out of a tough program in Chicago. Already with six career 100 yard games, Scott, and that shows you just how good, even though the record is poor, how well Northern Illinois has been able to run the football at times. And you know, talking to him this week, he's very excited to play in his game. You know, he said he watches that Navy defense. He said they don't do a real good job using their hands. And he thought he was going to have a ton of creases early in this game. And so far, uh, he hasn't popped off the big one, but he's been very effective. Here's Morris on third down, throwing ball deflected in the air, and it's intercepted by Greg Thrasher. Looked like it may have been Edwards or Corey Johnson who got a hand on it, and Greg Thrasher makes the interception for the midshipman. Edwards had the outside coverage here. What made this play possible, Edwards, the top of your screen, they're trying to throw that curl route right there at the last second. You get Johnson with the tip. Next thing you know, you have a deflection. That's ball drill right there. They practice these things every day in practice. You'll see guys line up, come down, tip the ball in the air. That's reactionary right there. Thrasher, that's a big stop because they were driving. Here's Bryant on the option. Pitches it right side. Singleton across the 15. He'll gain seven on first down. It'll bring up second down and three. And Corey Johnson, the former basketball player, a starter on the Navy basketball team, played three years in the basketball program, getting up that time, little leaping ability, and creates the turnover for his team. Paul Johnson will be happy with a seven-yard gain on first down as they started deep in their own territory. Spent a lot of time over on that defensive side of the football this week. Bryant cuts it up inside to the 18. He'll be very close to a first down. Now we're halfway through the second quarter, and Navy has yet to attempt to throw the football. You know, something we've seen, you know, when Kaipanoa, Kayaku, and Hada's been in there, they've actually tried to hit one of those deep ones where they come off the play action fake, and whether it's OJ Washington streaking down the field on the post pattern, at some point they're going to have to make a play because right now, Northern Illinois, they're daring them to do it. They're playing a 4 3 defense, and you got the four underneath backers right there with the safety down. Helping in support against the run, and here comes the play for play On action. call, Singleton wide open down the middle. Serving's got it at the 50, down to the 45-yard line. Jerry Bryant hearing Scott Zolak like he's got an NFL headset on. Gets it to Zerbin Singleton. The catch at the 45 and a Navy first down. It's like taking candy from a baby. I just showed you the four secondary pressures right here across the middle. There's too many guys on the line of scrimmage. Wide open. That's a nice job by Jared Bryant just laying the football out there, not trying to overthrow it. When you have someone that open, just make sure he catches it. Option coming to the near side. Bryant pitches to Campbell. DJ Teal with a nice block to spring him down to the 31 yard line. Wide receivers coach Brian Bohan and on the field to congratulate Teal for the great block right there. So now you start to see how key the interception is, the deflection by Johnson, the pick by the Thrasher, sets it up. And look at Bryant coming down. Now he's not taking the hits like Kaipo's taken. I think that's the difference right there, his ability to make that decision maybe a little quicker than Kaipo has in the past, and that helps take care of your body a little bit. Hey, remember Delaware coach Casey Keeler thought he was a more decisive player perhaps in the option, and Katani is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Larry English at the bottom of the pile. For Northern Illinois, Patrick George, another freshman in on the stop. It almost seems we can talk about Northern Illinois' defense. The name freshman seems to go alongside with as many guys as they've had to play. In fact, coming in two today, so many freshmen and juniors. In fact, there's no seniors mm -hmm. on that Northern Illinois defense, even on the depth chart. Free safety Bradley Pruitt leads the team in tackles. He, first time a freshman in 31 years, if this continues, will lead the defensive tackles. Inside handoff to Shun White. White down across a 30 to the 29. Hit there by John Tranchitella. Brings up a third down and eight. Zervin Singleton has had a heck of a ball game so far. And most of the time this year, Scott, he's been known for his blocking, but the last two weeks, he's been a playmaker. He's a different runner. Both these scores come off the little pitch out where they have him coming in motion. I love that call because it gets him going. And here's the big catch down the middle. And let's not forget, he's been in there on kick coverage, so this guy can do a lot for his size. Pound for pound, guys like Zervin Singleton and Reggie Campbell mean so much to this offense. Just under 10 yards per carry today. As Bryant calls a timeout. Didn't like what he saw. Still at seven on the play clock. Navy by seven. Third down coming up on CSTV.
With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels, from rock to pop, hip-hop to country, all 100% commercial-free. Get the best sports, like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio. I know I made a mistake. I listen to my mom, but just not on the football field all the time. My mom started me in football when I was seven years old. That was uh, her way of keeping me out of trouble, keeping me off the streets, so something constructive to do. She expects me to play well. She pretty much, she only points out the mistakes. If we win, it don't matter, only when we lose. I love you. <laughs> Bye, mom. <laughs> Yeah, I listen to her, just, you know, from afar. <laughs> How does Emergency boost your health and your energy? With energizing B vitamins and 1,000 milligrams of immune-boosting C. Emergency. Feel the good. Get this guy. How are we supposed to get these guys? Get a free Shrek fairy tale with specially marked packages of Energizer Max batteries. Energizer keeps going and going and going. Back in Annapolis, you can be the head of programming for your own college sports network. CSTV gives you the power to get live games, the latest news, up to the minute scores, and more on your TV, your computer, and your mobile phone. Go to CSTV.com slash my channel to find out how you can put all your teams on all your screens and be entered to win $1,000 or other great prizes. $1,000 will come from Scott Zolak. <laughs> Watch yourself. <laughs> Jared Bryant to the line of scrimmage. A third down facing Navy here. They need to get just short of the 21. Bryant going to follow the fullback through the hole. He's got a first down inside the 15. Dragged down near the 10-yard line. Spencer Williamson, the tackle for Northern Illinois, but it'll be a first and goal for Navy. A little more decisive than Kaipo. Yep. I, I mean, you, you really can see it, you know, after he gets a couple series under his belt. Watch how quick he comes off the fullback fake right there, and it actually helps himself because Katani comes up on that outside back. There's Katani with the fake watch. Boom, right there, gets, takes two guys out. First and goal for Navy, the ball at the 10-yard line. And we're going to have a legal procedure here. Guys moving, the snap did not coincide with their movement. So to bring up a first and goal from the 15 here for Navy. That's why I was so surprised they had the extended count. And that is, that is something, that, as we mentioned, Kaipo usually snaps the ball fairly quickly, and that could be a product of, you know, maybe Brian trying to switch some things up. But not everybody on the same page. You almost get a feel for when you right. play with a guy like Kaipo for someone, you get a feel for where the ball is coming. You almost get a rhythm and know when it's going to be snapped. And it's also as a backup quarterback, you have the responsibility to try and replicate the starter's snap count, the cadence, the inflection of the voice as close as he can as possible so you have it run smoothly. Brian, run an option near side. Sean White explodes into the checkerboard end zone. Touchdown, Navy. Northern Illinois really having a tough time on the perimeter with this option inside the red zone. They've defended it quite well once it, once once the ball's out in the middle of the field. But you get these guys on the corner and the corners on the defense have committed to the run to come up and help on the run support. But once these slot backs get to the outside, there's nobody at home. That time the quarterback driven completely out of bounds by the wide receiver blocking. Bullet adds the extra point. 524 to go. Second quarter, Navy 21, Northern Illinois 7 on CSTV. Off this upset, the Pac-10 race is up for grabs. One game, four quarters of everything these guys have in. When suddenly, one play changes everything. Fourth and goal from the 10. Pritchard has the snap. He drops back. He's going to throw that lob. Bradford jumps up. Touchdown! That's a Pontiac game-changing performance. This is an all-timer, folks. Watch this season's best performances at Pontiac.com slash NCAA. 
Get big arms, a ripped chest, and cut abs with the Perfect Push-Up. The Perfect Push-Up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the Perfect Push-Up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of a push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. You'll be ripped in no time. Get big fast. Call right now for the perfect push-up. Call 1-800-640-6823. Shipman happy right now. Their fellow brigade members on the football field leading 21-7. Sean White untouched into the end zone there, completing a 92-yard drive and very efficient. Scott, just three minutes and 14 seconds. Yeah, the slot backs are taking care of business on the offensive side of it, but you know, big big time news here for this defense. Early in this game, you know, Northern Illinois really had it going on. Uh, I like the way they were mixing some things up with some key stops. You get the big turnover and uh you, you really like you really like what you're seeing out of the defensive unit. They've made some adjustments this week. Zervin Singleton and Sean White both with 46 yards so far, combining for three touchdowns for the mid-team. From the 12, it's Adonis back to the 20, 25, stumbles up across the 30 to the 34-yard line. They'll give him the 35 in Northern Illinois. We'll have good field position for first down. Big time effort today from this Navy defense. Great adjustments they made so far early in this game. You look at the pressure, guys coming like Walsh. We haven't seen him big time in the loss, stepping up, collapsing the pocket, getting after the quarterback, and there's Johnson with the tip. Nice job by Thrasher, focusing on the football, making it, and then more importantly, they convert turnovers into touchdowns. If you can do that, you're gonna have a high success win rate. As it turns out that ball was tipped twice, once at the line of scrimmage and then by Johnson. Anderson looking for a hole, trying to cut it back. He's got some room if he can get outside. Anderson to the 40. Trying to outrun a man. Blake Carter finally gets him up at the 41-yard line. It'll be a gain of six on first down. Boy, he showed great patience there. Hey, that's the big thing here. And that's, you can tell it backs good when he doesn't overcommit. Talking about overcommitting, he runs to the left. He sees nothing's there. He waits, waits, allows everybody from the right side. You talk about pursuit to the football. Once those guys committed to come over, that's when he went with the comeback. Gain of seven, second and three. And the little fundamental thing there is he switched direction calmly, shifts the ball back over to his right hand when he started running right side. Play action. Morris under pressure. That's a takedown in the backfield. No call. He loads it up going downfield looking for a man. And it's knocked away. Trying to hit Davis down at the 30-yard line. Edwards was in coverage. Corey Johnson was blitzing that time. He's going to hit Wyatt Middleton. Johnson who came in blitzing. He got tackled coming from behind the play. That's that 12 personnel that Paul Johnson was talking about. Two tight ends. You see him in the backfield. They use him as a fullback. Morris feels the pressure. He gets out now as a young quarterback. You don't want to throw back inside against the grain. He actually had a chance at Davis there. Yeah, that's good coverage by Johnson back there in the secondary. Draped over him a little bit, but you know, he's making a play on the football. You see Corey played well last week against North Texas and getting some playing time today. Morris back to throw on third down. Loaded up, got Davis near side, and it's incomplete. Thrasher diving in to make the play and break it up. Not sure if he got a hand on it, but just being there enough to get the hand in front, get, get in front of the vision of Britt Davis, that last second may have broken up that football. I mean, Davis had it for a second. Ball looks like it's a little underthrown. He did get a hand in. So the timing and anticipation from these defensive backs early in the game shows that they've been, they've been working on it. It's paying off so far. Paul Johnson spent a lot of time with the defensive group this week. Campbell smashed as he catches the punt. Down at the 12-yard line. 
Join Adam Zucker and Trev Alberts for all your scores and highlights on Game Room coming up at halftime. Scores from around the nation. Lots of action today. Big one in the SEC, Georgia and Kentucky. We'll talk about that one, and of course, the big game between Ohio State and Michigan. Trev Alberts with the uh, perfect hair. Every man in America, like you, Pete, wants Trev's hair. Absolutely. For those of us who are follically challenged, we want to know where Trev got his locks from. It'd be transplant. No, not transplant. I think it's real. <laughs> we'll have to call Zucker. Have Zucker pat him oh, on he's too busy. He's so, he's so overworked there. Ballard. 14 brings up second down and nine. See Paul Johnson. Looking out on the field with 420 to go here. Always thinking ahead. What's Still hungry. That's, yeah. You got a 14 point cushion. Brian again to Ballard. This time he'll cross the 15 up near the 18 yard line. He'll bring up a third down and five yards to go. Ballard, one of the seniors, got to play last week basically 10 minutes from his house in Denton, Texas. He played against North Texas coach Todd Dodge in high school. Little home cooking. This is a tough thing here. You got a little over third and five, and that's Paul Johnson's a little ticked about first down. You want to get it to third and three, a little more manageable. Ballard looking to throw, loaded up down the middle, and it's dropped. Tyree Barnes got a hand on it, but good coverage in the secondary that time by Chase Carter, the junior for Northern Illinois, to help break it up. Sometimes as a receiver, when you're covered, you can fill it. I thought this was a good throw by Jared Bryant. You look at his head, he's looking to receive, looking to safety off to the right, and he stands in there, delivers it. Maybe there a little early. He's going for the football. Yeah, that's good coverage by Carr. That's good play by the But as a receiver, you know, a little body English, keep your, keep your back to the defender, hang on, and go up and make that catch, squeeze that football. So Fedito, for the second time today, will punt. Gets this one away. Fair catch, late fair catch called for by Simon, but he gets it done. At the 47-yard line, so Northern Illinois will have good field position for Coach Joe Novak, a disciple of Bo Schembechler. No surprise that uh, he was able to finally find some success in Northern Illinois. He looks a little like Bo. You get the hat, same headset, glasses. And this is a team that's used to having success at Northern Illinois, so this is a tough year. Obviously, well documented with the injuries, but you get the big win at home last week against Kent State, and you're trying to build off that. Anderson finds some room left side. In and out, still rolling, keeping the feet moving. Gets legs. down inside the 40, down to the 37 yard line. He'll be close to a first down, and a lot of Boisms as we talked to him earlier this week. And this motto said it all because after winning three of their first 33, the people that stuck with the program stayed a part of it, and they turned out to be champions in Northern Illinois. Bottom line, condense all those words to one that's commitment. Yep. You know, once everybody's in on it and you, you try and share that one common goal. You get everybody on the same page, and that's what he's trying to trying to get going. Second down, less than a yard. Morris gives Anderson coming right side. First down across the 30, breaks out of a tackle. And Wyatt Middleton hangs on to him at the 24-yard line. It'll be a first down for Northern Illinois. Got a man down behind the play, but getting up now is Jason. On Yubiago. What we talked about, Garrett Wolf helping Anderson out, making that first guy, first guy miss right there. Nate Frazier coming in, you know, makes four guys miss. I mean, that's just running through tackles. His ability, not only there, but even on the previous play, he set up three defenders, then he got hit, keeps the legs moving. Here they are, back to the two tight end set, flipping it over. Already 17 carries for Anderson and 71 yards. Here's carry number 18. Cuts it back against the grain, pounds his way down to the 20. Gain of four on first down, second down, and six. This is a good tempo right now that the Huskies have going. You're almost two minutes, under two minutes left here in the first half. You don't want to commit a turnover. You don't want to get a penalty, more importantly, a holding penalty, which takes you out of field goal range. This is what you want going into the locker room. Come away with some sort of points here so you have something to build off of, you know, heading into the second half. Shows you his durability. David Bryant had over 100 against Kent State but hasn't gotten on the field yet. Anderson 
It was 19 to carry down inside the 20 to the 17. They need the 14 for the first down. Brings up third down and three yards to go. On the flip side, Scott, with all of the injuries, the one thing it has enabled Northern Illinois to do is get a lot of young people on the field and get them some experience. And you see some of the kids we've seen out here, they've got some decent talent. And perhaps uh, the next couple of seasons, we'll see NIU back up in the upper half of the max standings. Field shifts over to the right. It's Anderson, the money man, finds a hole. First down, crashes inside the 10, delivers the blow, putting Wyatt Middleton going backwards a little bit there. Inside the 10, first and goal coming up for the Huskies. I like the patience that this club is showing right now, and you really have to like to play a quarterback, Ryan Morris. But here's the difference. There's the quick hitter. That's the ability Anderson has. He can lull you to sleep where it looks like he's almost in slow motion, setting up blocks. And then boom, they come back with a quick strike right off tackle. Northern Illinois has all three timeouts remaining. We're under a minute to go here in the first half. First and goal, it's Anderson. Bounces off his own blocker. Tries to get to the outside, right side. Thrasher trips him up in the backfield. It'll be a loss of three. It'll bring up second down and goal from the 12. And a timeout called by Northern Illinois. With 46 seconds remaining. Thrasher's had a pretty good first half here for Navy. This is the lull. Justin Anderson's in right there. Boom. I mean, you, offensive lineman gets driven right into the backfield. That's part of the problem right there. And he almost steps out of Thrasher's tackle. Allows Pospisil to come over and finish him off. And what's Justin Anderson done today? Well, let's just take a look. A little quick hitter right here early in the game. Keeps the drive going. And it's the big call right here. Little screen pass. Navy wasn't ready for it and just setting up blockers. Watch the guy pick his feet up and move. Runs through tackles. He's already touched it. What is it now, Pete, 18 times in this one, football game? 21 for 84. Plus, he's got a 17 yards worth of receiving on two catches. So 23 touches already. What I like about him, Scott, is he is aggressive. He delivers mm -hmm. the blow. He does not accept the tackle. He delivers the blow at the point of attack, and he forces you to wrap up and tackle. You're right. A lot of running backs look to go down once that first wave of defenders get there, but not this guy. And you don't want to throw an interception here. Young quarterback in this situation, throw it away. Second goal from the 11. Morris under pressure and does just that. Good job. Anderson was covered by Wimsat in the flat. It'll bring up third down and goal with 40 seconds remaining. To me, Scott, that's the toughest thing for a quarterback in this situation. You haven't had a whole lot of snaps. You haven't had a whole lot of reps. You're out here. You know you're trying to make something happen. Your team's only won two games. But to have the patience as he did there, not to make a key mistake here in this situation. Take a look at Dan Nicholson helping out as much as he can, getting the signals in. And all these kids are obviously at a very high level here playing college football. So they can run, they can throw, they can catch. Toughest thing as a young quarterback is learning how to manage the football game, manage those other 10 guys in the huddle, and get the playoff and get it, get it off and make it efficient. They hit five of their first six, over their last four. They screen it out. Anderson. Anderson going to sprint for the flag, and he's going to dive. Did he get over top of it? Yes. Yeah. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. <laughs> That's basically a check down. Not involved in the passing game. You have three guys in route. Moore shows good patience, gets the ball to Anderson in a check down. All you got to do is touch that orange pylon. Not sure if the ball got over, though. We may get a review here. Paul Johnson's trying to call timeout. He's out on the field. The line judge saw Johnson was very late running in to call the timeout. Can't hear, can't hear what Stan Evans is saying, but they are going to review the play with 31 seconds remaining. Just the key here is where is the ball? Well, the ball's in the left hand. He's trying to switch it over, but he feels the pressure being pulled down by Johnson. He missed the pylon. He I, was out of bounds first before he hit the pylon. I think, I think his rear end goes out of bounds first. Now Johnson's out of bounds. That and he's making the tackle. And it's almost like he got spun around, let out of bounds from behind first. 
and then kind of reached out and took down the pylon. I think they're going to mark it shy of the goal line. Yeah, he misses the pylon. The pylon just goes down basically from the momentum and wind of the players going by. It doesn't appear to be any contact with the player to knock the pylon down. Standing job with the cameras again, boys. Multiple angles to check this out from. I thought the previous one from behind was the best replay of all because it shows you where his mm -hmm. arm was in relation to the pylon and he never touched it. And he can be out as long as he gets that right arm and extends that football inside and touches that pylon. He this did not do that. I'm talking about right here. Right. Johnson spinning him out of bounds yeah. and he appears to miss the pylon. So the question is, is that enough evidence? And I think in these reviews, you know, unless it's just so cut and dry that it's it's not the right call. And a lot of times we've seen calls upheld this year. So we'll see what happens on this one. If it is denied, it'll bring up a fourth and goal with 31 seconds remaining. Probably from the one, and I'm sure Northern Illinois would go for it at that point. Give you another look, this one from the side. And this is the view of the field judge in this situation. Mm -hmm. He sees the pylon going down. So he's in this case he did not guessing, see the football. Right, Correct. He's guessing touchdown at that point because all he sees is the pylon going down because well, look at the field judge. He's seven yards behind it back there. After review, the call in the field is overturned. The plan does not get into the end zone inbound. The ball should be placed on the one half yard line. Will be fourth down, Northern Illinois ball. The clock will start on the snap. I mean, you really can't blame the field judge there, Scott. He's got no chance to make that call seven yards directly behind it. Well, I think we got it right here, but let's not forget it's not third down, folks. It's fourth down. Right. You got three guaranteed points. Your young football team, and they're going to take the time out and talk it over, make sure they have the right personnel and setup on the field. Go for the touchdown. So Joe Novak puts play on pause here. Shipman going to try and make some noise when uh, the Huskies come back to the line of scrimmage here. And again, Northern Illinois in a no lose situation. You're two and eight. You're trying to get a victory. You know, you've got a great back in Justin Anderson. You don't have a choice. You feel you should be able to get one yard. We can see fourth down conversions have not been kind this season to Northern Illinois, but today they hit on their only opportunity on fourth down. Now on third down, ironically, they hit five of their first six. They've missed their last five now on third down. They're five on the leg of the football game. And from a ball control standpoint, you couldn't ask for anything better if you're Northern Illinois. You've had the ball for five more minutes than Navy has. Just haven't been able to get conversions and the interception deep in the Navy territory there proving huge right now as Navy has a two touchdown lead. There's got to be confidence in his defense and I guarantee you Paul Johnson's in there telling him in that huddle. Let's not forget guys it's just two weeks ago we had to shut down Notre Dame on a two point conversion. Northern Illinois to the line of scrimmage Anderson the single setback. Field the tight end in motion reverses back to the right side Morris. Anderson, did he get in? No signal. Navy's defense is held. <laughs> Navy with a player down. Chris Kuhar Pitters getting up very slowly, but a much maligned Navy defense playing some of its best football in this first half here. Pospisil with the big hit in the middle. Take a look at him right there on the left side of your screen. It's a great read, shuffles over and watch the contact right there. Gets his head in. This is a great angle right here. All the ball has to do is break that plane of the white stripe. I don't think, I, he, gets I don't think he did. And if it does go to review, Sure they... Illinois challenged the play. Northern Illinois has challenged the call. And why not? You've only got 27 right. seconds remaining here. But there's got to be enough evidence to overturn you can't the original see... call that was made on the field. Right. You can't see the ball, first of all. It's not like he tried to reach out with the football and break the plane. He's got it tucked inside. And 
maybe his helmet gets across the line but his body clearly doesn't get to the line and you mentioned Scott the possible hit knocks him backwards quickly. Yeah and you can see what happened to Chris Kuar Pitters number 92 on the right side of your screen. They fall on the back of his left leg. Hospital comes over makes the hit. He's the one that falls on the back of Pitters. And that's what this is a great angle right here. Watch the football. It stays in his left arm. And it doesn't look like he gets all he's got to do is reach it over. Yeah. And he did not do it. Stayed in the corner of the elbow. Talk about the play with Kuhar Pitters. That's the again play in the trenches. I mean, you're engaged with your man. And sure. You have you you end up getting hurt because people around you who you have no control over end up rolling up on you. That's how we see so many linemen end up with the serious knee injuries. Right. On those type of plays, but a guy rolls up on him from behind. You never get the attention. You never get the accolades, and that's part of the job. You know those guys in the trenches. Talk yeah, they're in there doing the dirty work and you get guys like Pospis will able to scrape make the hit. We, it's a good job getting his hips through the tackle. We talked to the Spokane Washington native this week too about the play he was able to make at Notre Dame with a scoop and score and you know for a senior in his final season of football it had to be an exciting moment mm -hmm. for him. It's not like you practice those plays you know it happens all the time but <laughs> to happen in South Bend and you know to be a part of it you know the big win and and of course with the way things have gone for Navy in the past where it appeared they've had Notre Dame beaten a couple times and only to have some freak things happen. You, know, you figure Kuhar Pitters is going to get tripped up by one of the football gods there as he stumbles to sure. get the football in that situation. He was able to carry it all the way in to the end zone. When you think about the multiple plays even at the end of that game. You know Kaipo making the big throw to Reggie Campbell down the sideline. Uh, as you said the big defensive stand you know on the two point conversion. So many different plays you can point to. Hospital playing for Haber to Haber today and coming up with a big hit right there. We'll see if it was enough to mm -hmm. turn away a Northern Illinois touchdown. This review process taking a long time. Not sure really what the problem is. Not here. sure where the indecision is here by the review booth, but this is a great look. The ball stays in the left arm. Penetration is stopped. It's one of the few times we've seen Justin Anderson push backwards. Mac crew with Stan Evans as the referee still listening still waiting. This is the bad part about replay. Yeah maybe they get the call right. But at some point you disrupt the flow of the game. I, I just don't understand what takes so long. You get a great view there. You see it even if you look at it two or three times it's either touchdown or it isn't. Radio it's easy down to the spot. Field. I mean you know where the spot is. Radio down to the field tell the referee no touchdown or. A touchdown and let's let's move on. I mean this has been a four minute process already. Just trying to determine what's going on. As you mentioned the kids standing around waiting. 30,000 plus in attendance just waiting. 27 seconds remaining here in the first half. Paul Johnson still waiting. Come on guys. And referees Stan Evans finally has the word from above. After review the call in the field is overturned. The runner was in possession of the ball and broke the plane of the goal line. Wow. Touchdown. Wow. Well maybe they have an angle we didn't see. Hard to determine from this angle. It's obvious the guy maintained possession, but where did he break the plane of the goal line? The ball. The helmet broke the plane, but the ball looked like it never did. Mendick for the extra point. Wow. So a team that has certainly not gotten its share of breaks this year, Northern Illinois, gets one right there. Joe Novak's challenge proves to be a good one. And here's your 35th look at it. <laughs> I mean, maybe his helmet gets across it's the it, line, but the ball is. It's looks not like the helmet, it's, it's got to be the ball. Right. You can't tell from either angle, from the rear or here from the great end zone shot of it. And that's the thing the original call on the field, not in. You need to see something so decisive to sway your. Decision that to overturn the original call. 
and I don't see anything concrete enough. You never see the ball in any of those angles. They're looking at the same angles we are. And they have the same cameras. Yes, they have the same, you know, have the same you angles. You never see the ball in any of those things. So by rule, with the way the rules are written about it, having to be substantial evidence to overturn it, you never see the ball there. But a good break for Joe Novak's team. Nine plays, 47 yards, three minutes. Anderson, Anderson, 85 yards today, and now with the touchdown. Mendick, a low line drive kick. Bobbled, Singleton at the 20. 30, 35, 39 yard line. Navy will have it there with 20 seconds remaining and two timeouts. See what Paul Johnson elects to do here. Quarterback Jared Bryant running out. You're in decent field position. I mean, it's not like you're backed up at your own 20, your own 18 yard line. You're on your own 40. Throw something down the middle of the field. That's obviously available with think, two timeouts remaining. I think you got to take a shot. OJ Washington comes to the near side. Barnes to the far. Singleton, the man to the bottom of the screen. Split out. Ryan on a quarterback draw. Up to the 45, 50 yard line, 14, 13, and a timeout with 13 seconds remaining. How many times have we seen that? You know, remember the Duke game? It's exactly. Same where he popped off the big quarterback draw, set up the game winning field goal. Take a look at the play here by Jared. Right now the clock starts to the play clock starts to run back in. I thought Navy called a timeout. That's a quarterback draw all the way. You can see linemen downfield, guys releasing down. If he gets past just that one guy, he may be still running. Yep. So Navy will have one timeout remaining with 13 seconds to go. And how about the pursuit that time from DJ Perkle, number 98, the freshman lost his helmet, kept on rolling down the field in pursuit. So Navy will have it at the 50 yard line now to get in confident field goal range. They probably need to get down to at least the 25 yard line to give Joey Bullen a real fair opportunity here to kick it between the uprights. You have 13 seconds. You have one timeout left so you can still throw the football in the middle of the field. It's not that you have to go to the outside to the perimeter to stop the clock get out of bounds. Now Matt Harmon who has a little bit stronger leg probably can kick a longer one as you can see as a 46 yarder to his credit. Has had some injury issues, so if they try a long field goal, it would be he that does it. Bryant screens it out to Katani. Katani to the 40, down to the 35, four seconds remaining, and Navy calls a timeout. It would be a 53 yard attempt right now. And we'll see what Paul Johnson does here. Just a simple little screen. Brian has nice touch on the football makes a real catchable football for Katani. And that's OK. You could cut it back inside. You know you have the timeout. He didn't have to get to the sideline there. If he tries to get out of bounds he would have consumed the last four seconds. And I see Harmon out in the huddle but we'll see what Paul Johnson does. That's a long field goal for a guy that hasn't been kicking in a few weeks and only been kicking in warm ups and in practice for the most part. I think you have a better chance to hit a field goal from this point than hit a Hail Mary. I, I think the logical smart choice is to kick the field goal. And of course with only four seconds you know the clock will run out and that's exactly what they will do. So Matt Harmon out of a Jared Bryan hold from 43 yards. Obviously Northern Illinois guarding against the fake one. They've got guys back off the line and if it's short it's returnable. Harmon he'll kick it. Will it get there. No caught in the end zone. Chase Carter running it out of there. Gets to the sideline and there he steps out of bounds. End of an entertaining first half here in Annapolis, Maryland. Navy 21, Northern Illinois 14. Let's send it back to the CSTV Fieldhouse for Game Room with Adam Zucker and Trev Alberts. All right.
right, so no Antonio Cromartie moment there at the end of the first half. Navy still up a touchdown. Adam Zucker hanging out here with Trev Alberts. Welcome inside game when we got a lot of stuff to get to, including number one team in the country, LSU at Ole Miss. We had the tailgate show there. The party was on. The party might still be on. This is a close game right now. LSU punting up a touchdown from its own end zone. Marche Green catching it on the run. Breaks a tackle. Heads toward the sideline. He's got himself a 45-yard punt return for a touchdown. Great job getting to the sideline, picking up some blocks. But LSU would answer, Adam. On the ensuing kickoff. Woo! Trendon Holiday. Busting through a seam, and he's gone. 98 yards for the touchdown. The Tigers still lead this thing 14-7 right now, late in the first half. All right, who is going to challenge LSU for the national title now that Oregon's out of the way? Kansas on top of Iowa State, 21-7. Todd Reesing has not just thrown one incompletion in this game. Three touchdown passes, including a 51-yarder. Also in the Big 12, Missouri at Kansas State, Chase Daniel to Jeremy Macklin, the Tigers scoring machine in full effect. Well, he's been outstanding. The freshman is really another option for Chase Daniel here again. Steps away from pressure, rolls left. Look at the beautiful throw down the middle of the field, finds a wide open Macklin again. 44 yards for the touchdown. Mizzou getting the win 49-32. Sets up, we think, Missouri against the Kansas team that will win today. Big one next week. The most intriguing matchup, obviously, for the BCS is the Big 12. Obviously, you have Missouri and Kansas. Don't forget about Oklahoma. The winner of that game gets to play right. Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship. And Oklahoma still has to go on the road to play Texas Tech. A lot of things could still happen in the Big 12. And that one's coming up tonight. Coming up here. We're going to check on a couple more teams who are definitely on the rise, like Illinois, probably the most exciting team to watch play right now in the Big Ten. And what may end up being a double win for Georgia, we'll explain back inside game. Hi, I'm Chuck Norris. The folks at Total Gym have asked me to take 60 seconds to tell you why I use the Total Gym. Well, I use it because it works. Well, that wasn't 60 seconds. This is what's great about the Total Gym. It works on all the muscles. You name it, chest, arms, thighs, thighs, shoulders. And at the same time, it's working the gut. And also, you can fluctuate your workout. You can isolate the arms. You can elevate the machine to use whatever percentage of your body weight. I can take it around with me on all my locations. Great workout. Great exercise. Now, for the first time ever, you can try a Total Gym absolutely risk-free for an entire two months. You won't even be charged for shipping and handling. But believe me, it won't take two months. You'll be hooked on it the first time you try it. Call 1-800-215-0224. That's 1-800-215-0224. Watch the 2007 Men's and Women's Cross Country Championship live, Monday at noon, only on CSTV. Uh-oh, that'll leave a mark. And another, if scratches, dings and nicks drive you crazy, get Fix It, the fast action scratch remover from Simon Eyes. One, apply Fix It to the scratch. Two, push Fix It's high tech formula deep into the pores of the surface. Three, just wipe it away. Got a door ding? Just fix it. That annoying nick? Fix it. You could spend over $150 at a body shop, or you could get Simon Eyes Fix It for only $19.95. We'll also include the finishing kit, a $30 value, yours free. You'll also get Fix It for the home. Scratch stovetop, fix it. Scratch refrigerator, fix it. And it's yours free. But call right now and we'll send you the Simonized Turbo Back, the car back with the muscle to pick up any mess, yours free. You get it all, an $80 value for only $19.95. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-506-0705. Call now. Ferocious Fernando Vargas and Ricardo El Matador Mayorga are two boxers who love to fight. The bad blood is still fresh from the last time they met. Now, the street fight moves to the ring on Friday, November 23rd. Unbelievable! What a fight! Vargas versus Mayorga, the brawl. Don't miss it. Friday, November 23rd, live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Vargas versus Mayorga on Channel 123. 
All right, back inside game room. Ohio State brought the defense, Trev. Outstanding job all day. Dominated the line of scrimmage. And again, Wells, 39 carries over 200 yards. They won at the line of scrimmage once again, year after year. Ohio State with another big victory on the road. All right, also in the Big Ten, Illinois coming off the big win over the Buckeyes. Juice Williams, this guy's looking great. Oh, great catch, too, by Jeff Cumberland. A line eye up 28-7. On Northwestern, Richard Mendelhall can score, too. Really makes a difference for this team. Takes a little pitch there from Williams. Gets to the outside. Breaks a couple tackles into the end zone for eight-yard touchdown. They get the win. Wisconsin, Minnesota, the whole Paul Bunyan axe thing going on. Oh, what a grab. Eric Decker in the end zone from Adam Weber. Gophers up 10-3. Here comes Tyler Donovan rolling out, spinning, jumping. He's in. Badgers within three at the half, 13-10. The score and yeah, a little Penn State, Michigan State action. These, this game hasn't been exciting since Larry Johnson was in Happy Valley. Anthony Morelli hitting Dion Butler for a touchdown pass. Penn State up 10-7, closing moments of the first half. So the Big Ten, the Big Ten was a bit of a dud this year, really, and uh, really things got decided today. And Wisconsin really was a team at the start of the season. They were trying to build on that 11-1 victory last year. That didn't work out, of course, for them. But I think you look at this team, Ohio State, once again, go back to that Michigan game, the defensive dominance. 95 yards of total offense for Michigan today. Ohio State got four sacks, held them to three of 18 on third downs. Vernon Golson had three sacks. So again, Adam, just a dominating defensive performance for the Buckeyes. Congratulations. They're off to the Rose Bowl. All right. Things would tell you that in the SEC, LSU is the best team, but really, Georgia's been playing lights out and had a chance today to put themselves in position to meet LSU in the championship game. And Mikey Henderson putting himself in position to get married, proposes to his girlfriend before the game. No, Sean Moreno proposing to the defense and Kentucky accepts the ball. Wildcats taking advantage of it as well. Andre Woodson to Keenan Burton. Wildcats taking a 7-0 lead. In fact, they'd go up 10-0 in this game, but then Georgia would start to get back in it. Up 10-7, there's the special team. Great job, got a block right there, recover it. That's what Georgia's been doing. They're playing defense and playing better on special teams. And of course, they can do this right here, run the football. Here, it's uh, at Moreno again as he gets to the outside, a very physical run. And then don't forget about Matthew Stafford, the inside handoff fake gets into the end zone. Had two interceptions, but a pretty good job running the offense again for the Bulldogs. And it's 24-13 when the defense takes over again and Levels Woodson, fewest points scored in a game this year by Kentucky, 24-13 the final. So, Georgia needs Tennessee to lose, and it was looking good for a while. Mackenzie Adams to Jeff Jennings, Vandy up 14-9 at the half. In the third quarter, up 17-9, third and goal. Adams, George Smith going up to take it away from the defender, 24-9, Vandy in Knoxville. But the ball, down eight in the fourth. Eric Ames to Austin Rogers for the short touchdown. They go for two and don't get it, though. So the Vols are still trailing by two. Could be huge for Georgia. Meanwhile, here's Florida and your Heisman winner. <laughs> Tim Tebow, outstanding. Cornelius Ingram there, 26 yards. Again, Tebow there looks left, goes back to the right, finds Aaron Hernandez. Florida ends up moving on. A nice day again for Tim Tebow. He's been outstanding, clearly, in my mind at least, the front runner for the Heisman Trophy. Yeah, Tebow looking great, but we saw what the Georgia defense was able to do to that team. What can they do to LSU if that ends up being the matchup? Well, I think the dirty little secret about the Georgia Bulldogs, everybody talks about no Sean Moreno. Certainly, he has really ignited that offense, but the bottom line is defensively, I think, is where Georgia's made so much improvement. Willie Martinez, the defensive corners, done an outstanding job. Remember, Kentucky's offense and Andre Woodson has been great all season long and Georgia holds them to the 13 points, 293 yards of total offense, only 23 yards rushing. Mm. I think at some point you realize, yeah, LSU has a great defense, but I'm looking forward, of course, if Tennessee loses today, if Georgia gets a chance to play against LSU, this is a different team. I know they have two losses, but right now they're playing as well as anybody in, the, in college football. And it could end up with the SEC having no shot whatsoever at a national champ if that ends up being the case. But still a lot of football to be played, still a lot of football to listen to on Sirius Satellite Radio. Here's your lineup. Look at all these games. Look at all these games. Notre Dame is up 14-0 on Duke. You can listen to that one on Channel 159. Cal at Washington. Cal gave up the first 14 points in that game. Listen to the Huskies broadcast on 122. Later on, big battle in the Big East, West Virginia and Cincy. Listen to the guys from Morgantown on 143. Then take your pick in the Big 12 battle, Sooners, Red Raiders at 8 Eastern. More game room coming up after the break. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels, from rock to pop, hip-hop to country, all 100% commercial-free. Get the best sports, like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game, every week, everywhere. 
Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio. The United States Naval Academy develops young men and women morally, mentally, and physically to become officers and combat leaders of character for the Navy and Marine Corps. Start your journey at the United States Naval Academy. Watch the NCAA Division I Field Hockey Championship tomorrow at noon, only on CSTV. Town and Country with the first ever best in the business lifetime powertrain warranty. Chrysler Engineer. The attack came without warning and claimed 8 million lives. It just hasn't happened yet. Now, the man who can see the future. It happened. Two hours from now. Is the only one. We're still alive. Let's try to keep it that way. Who can save it. Move back! Move back! Do exactly what I say. I'll save your life. Next. Former Big East teams, current Big East teams, recent additions to the Big East, all here for you. Hokies winning 17-7 at the half. UConn all over the Qs. 30 to 7, Tyler Lorenzen, 213 passing and a touchdown. In the ACC as well, Georgia Tech over North Carolina, thanks to Travis Bell's 27 yarder with 15 seconds to go to get the win. And Florida State knocking off Maryland 24 16. Seminoles getting 21 in the first half. What else we got, Trev? Oh, how about Chris Bazzotti of Harvard? 316 yards, four touchdowns, a big win over Yale. Yale's first loss of the season. Uh, they go down. Harvard gets the Ivy League title. Meanwhile, we're just hearing Tennessee got a field goal. They're up 25-24 on Vandy, so the Vols could be back in position to win the SEC East. Vandy has the ball right now with two and a half to go as I look at CSTV's Game Tracker Live, CSTV.com. All right, second half coming up. Trev and I will see you back here after the game. Navy on top by a touchdown. They've scored three in the game, one of them by Zerbin Singleton. This made it 14-7, his 26-yarder. Back to Annapolis after the Tired of all the rubbing and scrubbing, cleaning the hard way? Anthony Sullivan here for the new Sonic Scrubber. This powerful, portable Sonic Cleaner is easy on your arm, weighs only ounces, and fits in the palm of your hand. It blasts away dirt and grime in seconds without any manual scrubbing. Sonic Scrubber's strong bristle brush uses sonic oscillation technology to scrub away bathroom buildup, making cleaning much faster, easier, and better. Its high-powered scrubbing easily tackles the toughest bathroom cleaning jobs and powers through the stuff you go crazy trying to clean. You can't scrub corners with a toothbrush but sonic scrubber can just snap on the comb brush its pointed end and angle design gets into corners and makes dirty old grout look new its highly effective scrubbing even removes calcium and hard water stains then just snap on the softer bristle brush and let sonic scrubber go to work on fixtures it contours to the curves bringing back the shine the secrets the sonic technology you get an amazing 3600 powerful high torque scrubs per minute destroying dirt and grime on contact use the large bristle brush for bigger jobs it's great for removing the ring of soap scum in the tub call now and you'll get the sonic scrubber plus five scrub brushes for just 1998 but that's not all call right now and for a penny more we'll include a sonic scrubber for the kitchen and around the house just pay separate shipping and handling use it for the many everyday household cleanups it even powers out burnt on cookware messes easily cleans up a dirty stove top and nothing's better for microwave spills and splatters you get it all a sonic scrubber for the bathroom plus five scrub brushes and for only a penny more a sonic scrubber for the kitchen and household a huge value all for just $19.99 and ask about our special holiday offer on the pro detailer sonic scrubber for the car boat and garage sonic scrubber is available at these and other fine retailers but this offer is only available if you order now here's how to order call now to get your sonic scrubber for only 1998 you'll get the amazing bathroom scrubber and a set of five brush heads for one low price but call now and we will throw in a kitchen and household scrubber for one penny more call 800-591-7279 now
CSTV Football Nation is being brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. And by Sirius Satellite Radio. Hear what you've been missing on Sirius, the best radio on radio. Halftime in Annapolis, Navy leading Northern Illinois by a count of 21 to 14. Welcome back inside as night falls here in Annapolis and Scott another action packed first half uh, for Navy offensively but a game that they look like they had in control Northern Illinois catches a little bit of a break at the end of the half. And that's a big thing if you look at what Northern Illinois has done I thought they had good balance today so far in the first half they're running Justin Anderson the young quarterback Ryan Morris has played well they haven't asked him to do too much but uh, this Navy defense has played well also. Yeah a couple of stops and a big turnover let's take a look at the uh, first half here and for uh, Ryan Morris you mentioned Scott he got off to a good start yeah I mean Justin Anderson is their go to guy you see him right there on the screen pass you watch the way he hits the hole he anticipates well and here's Navy getting guys those slot backs urban singleton on the outside for two key touchdown runs early in this football game Jared Bryant really hasn't had to do stuff but right now there's your play of the game so far you make the call did Justin Anderson break the play of the game or not it was ruled that he did and then all of a sudden it went to replay. They say it's a touchdown. And then all of a sudden it's a seven point game here at the half. But you see the balance for Northern Illinois and great offensive production from Navy. Yeah, Navy with 179 on the ground and 187 total for Northern Illinois. That one turnover though, huge in that first half has stopped the Northern Illinois drive. Second half kickoff is coming up next. The mids by seven on CSTV. What happened to your home phone bill? All right, just in time, CBX. That low promotional rate you signed up for has disappeared. It's called the shell game, and the phone and cable companies think they can get away with it. Now you can save up to $300 a year on your phone bill. How? Vonage! Did your phone rate start here and keep going up? With Vonage, your rate starts low and stays low. Awesome service. I can take you where I want to. I can call internationally. I'm saving money by just having the phone line through them versus bundling. Plus, free calls to Europe and international rates as low as a penny a minute. And 25 premium features, all for just $24.99 a month. Enjoy crystal clear digital sound quality using your high-speed internet connection. Try Vonage for 60 days risk-free. Call 1-800-479-2409. That's 1-800-479-2409. Hi, I'm Frank Caliendo. Check out my new show on TBS. Boom! It's called Frank TV. It's got karate moves and all kinds of stuff. He, I mean, he's a guy who pretends to be other people. I mean... Fine, walk away. I don't care. I like being alone. Frank Caliendo is changing the face of late night. Who are you? are an idiot. Anybody getting the uh, creepy old man feeling right now? The all-new TBS sketch comedy Frank TV premieres November 20th at 11 on Channel 247. Only on TBS. Very funny. If insurance can help make it snow in San Francisco, we can probably help you save some money on car insurance. So get in on the action. Insurance makes it easy to see how our prices stack up against the competition. No jumping around from place to place to compare rates. At Insurance, you can compare rates instantly online. Compare rates and save at Insurance today. Enjoy the most college hoops in the nation on ESPN Full Court from DirecTV. With key matchups from some of college basketball's top conferences, ESPN Full Court takes it to the hoop with up to 30 games per week from outside your local area. Special early bird offer, only two payments of $49.50 each. Order by November 23rd and save $10 off the regular price. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or log on to directtv.com slash full court. ESPN Full Court from DirecTV. Back in Annapolis, Navy leading Northern Illinois 21 to 14. We get ready to start the third quarter here. They see Herb Spencer. 
An active first half for the midshipmen on the defense as their defense played some of their better football this year. Lost Pospis a leading Navy's defense with 11 stops in that first half. Mids will have the football first here to start the second half. A chance to increase a seven point lead and certainly Scott they look like they were in control of the game and the Northern Illinois gets the benefit of the turnover on the replay and sticks around in the football game here. It'll be interesting to see if Navy's offense can reestablish the momentum here and control the game here with this first drive. And that's what you got to do. To Northern Illinois' credit, that was a very good drive to end the second quarter. Um, Ryan Moore showed patience. They used their main guy, Justin Anderson. They didn't commit the silly penalty down inside the red zone. And more importantly, he didn't turn the football over. Singleton thought Campbell was going to get it. Campbell thought Singleton was going to get it. Then nobody got it. So Singleton downs it in the end zone. Jared Bryant, two for three in that first half. And Scotty ran for 39 yards. So what do you think about his first half of play? You don't think it, I don't think he's as involved as, as, as Kaipo has been in the past. But, you know, you have enough skilled people around you. Get the ball into Zerbin Singleton's hands. Get it to Reggie. Uh, he hit the one key pass to Zerbin down the middle. Uh, they've been daring him to throw the football. But as we've seen with this triple option, you, you just keep hitting your fullback like they did right there at Adam Ballard, and you wear him down. Ballard, tremendous effort on first down. Gain of 12. It'll be another Navy first down. What makes these fullbacks so good is the, the tempo at which they hit the line of scrimmage with right there. I mean, he gets through that first line of the nose tackle and the defensive end on the left side, and he's just carrying linebackers. Basically, tacklers are catching him. Bryant keeps it himself, tucks it in behind Ballard, up across the 35. It'll be a gain of three. It'll bring up second down and seven yards to go. Paul Johnson continues to send plays in. They don't signal them. They don't have a lot of check with me's, meaning the quarterback has the freedom to audible at the line of scrimmage. Talking to Coach Johnson, he says, hey, what we call, we go with. It's just a, it's just a feel he has. He's one of 14 coaches, prominent coaches, that call their own stuff from the sidelines. Head, head guys, Ralph Friedgen being another one up the road. Here's Brian on the keeper up near the 39, gains four. It'll bring up third down and three. The Navy offense today without Kaipanoa Kahiaku in Hata. Rushing yardage leading the nation. And this year, Scott, the passing probably been as prevalent as we've seen in recent years for the mids on offense. Yeah, before we've seen them just go out and attempt passes to attempt it. You know, they're doing it with a purpose this year. They've hit some big plays, uh, you know, especially two weeks ago against Notre Dame. Kaipo has a nice shot to Reggie down the sideline. He has a good feel for it. And, you know, talking to Kaipanoa Kaihaku and Hata this week, Jared Bryant's the guy that helps him in his passing game. They're very competitive, and it's not where one guy's jealous, the other one's playing. They help each other. It's a very good, healthy situation here. Bryant on the first down carry to the 46-yard line. Watch the decision. Boom, right there. Again, we saw him do that in the first half. Quick fake to the fullback, then he follows the fullback's block up inside. That's what's different than Kaipo. Kaipo active, chewing that gum on the sidelines. Tell he's into the game. Big hit on Brian as he gets up near midfield. A gain of four on the play. Alex Kuba coming up to make the stop. The freshman for Northern Illinois. Brings up second down at six. This is a big drive right here for Navy. He had a two touchdown lead to end that first half. He gave up the quick score there. Now all of a sudden it's a seven point game. You need to come out and reestablish tempo. 12.50 clock on the move here. Third quarter. Jared Bryant calling out the signals. Short drop pass play out of the backfield. He's got shut. Jared Bryant, just a quick three-step drop, and what makes it so successful is he gives that catchable football to Shun White. Puts it out there. It's a little low, but it's good enough. It's in front of the guy. You don't want to overpower guys to the sideline. Make the catch more difficult than what it is. Just put it in the breadbasket. Let these guys pick up first downs. Bryant following Ballard through. Tripped up bottom of the pile. Gets down to the 39. Gain of two. First hit by 98. DJ Perkle. Backup nose guard playing today for the injured Mike Krause. It's amazing how many freshmen have stepped in on his defense and not only just step into play and, and log plays, guys leading and tackling. You got Pruitt coming out of the secondary from the free safety position. 
and, and, and they're going to be very involved. I mean, they still have eight guys around the ball. You see how close those linebackers are to the line of scrimmage. Pitch coming right side, serving Singleton down inside the 30, down to the 28-yard line. That'll be a gain of 11 and another first down for Navy. It's a common respect these slot backs have for each other. Watch Shun White at the bottom of your screen. Zerber gets outside. Shun White right there cuts the defender down. And if it's not one guy, this play is going to be run to the other side. We're going to see Zerbert Singleton doing the same thing. And of course, the guys you forget about, the O.J. Washington and Tyree Barnes blocking downfield as receivers. Curtis Sharp with a nice block that time for the mids as well. First and 10 from the 28. It's Bryant hurtling over his own fullback, Adam Mather, down to the 25. That, that's the difference between Bryant and Kaipo. I mean, the decision to keep the football in between the tackles. We don't see Kaipo do that. He'll take it more to the outside, absorb that hit, make the pitch. There's the fake to Ballard. It's not even really a good fake. That's basically probably a called play. Ballard looking for that backer. You know, you'll see him put the arm up and come over top of the football if he's part of that option. Right there he wasn't. Second down, it's Brian again through the middle. Maybe tripped over his own man as he went through the hole there. Gets down inside the 25 to the 23. Take a look at the former Mr. Football in the state of Alabama. And that's nothing like there. When you're Mr. Football in Alabama, that means you can play. He played both sides. He was a pretty good defensive player. And of course, you know, the famed Hoover High School. Well documented how good of a football program they've had over the years. Man in motion, the pitch, Singleton coming right side, dives inside the 20, steps out of bounds, just inside the 20 yard line. It's gonna be about a yard short of the first down, Scott. It'll bring up a fourth down decision from Paul Johnson. Normally these are yeah, one way decisions. Yeah, it's no decision, Pete. Let's this guy's go gonna for go for it. Yep. Of course, John Parker Wilson, quarterback at Alabama, also Hoover product. And perhaps the advantage of playing in a high profile program like that maybe better prepares you for obviously what will occur at the college level especially for a guy like John Parker Wilson at Alabama where every move is every game's big yep. maybe oh they got him to move the That's question the is that English or whoever jump oh, yeah. it in and put, force Bridgers to move. That's the question. And that's a good job by Bridgers moving, not allowing the defender to go back and get set. Once a guy, once a defender comes into that neutral zone, one man removed over the top, you as an offensive player can move to get the call. We've seen Navy do that all year. Offside. Nobody's jumped. That's the first the defense, time we've seen somebody do that when they go to that formation. That's a five-yard penalty, the result of which is a first down. So the five-yard walk-off. He's on the right. He's going to see the move there, and it's going to force him to come down. Here's English in the, in the neutral zone. Boom, right down. Because it becomes a threat to a ball carry on the inside. You, you as a blocker are allowed to do that. Here's the pitch. Singleton pounding his way down inside the five. And he'll be close to another first down. Correction is Bice on the offsides. Boy, how these slot backs sacrifice their bodies blocking for the other guys that are You talk about not being selfish as a runner. Knowing you're going to get your carries. Reggie Campbell right here. Watch him come down with the kick out, the little cut block. Zerbert Singleton gets the ball on the outside. Boom. Great block on Bradley Pruitt. Nice low center of gravity. Quick pitch, Shun White going left side. Pounding forward. And he's going to be stopped short of the goal line. The official waving his arms. Good effort. And it's going to literally be just before the goal line. It'll be first and goal for the midshipman. He had such great leg drive right there, Shun White, all the way until the end. I like this call. Putting the slot back in motion. Gets him going with a good head of steam. Gets him right there. That allows him to lower that shoulder. Now, if he's going from the set position, you know, Larry English maybe makes that play. Yeah. The fact that he's already in motion, it's almost not like it's Canadian football. Brian diving forward and he's hitting for the touchdown. So Jared Bryant picks up his 65th yard of the afternoon, and this time he's into the end zone for a Navy touchdown. 
That's the way to come out of the locker room and set the tone to start the second half. You give up the touchdown right before the, the gun for the first half. And you come out real methodical, classic Navy offense. Pat Harmon on to add the extra point this time, and he bangs it off the scoreboard. Jared Bryant gets Navy into the end zone. An impressive drive to start the second half. Mids 28, Northern Illinois 14 on CSTV. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels from rock to pop, hip hop to country, all 100% commercial free. Get the best sports like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio. The King's brake lines, they've been cut. He'll go right off a cliff. Yeah, whatever. How dare he make a home-style melt? Down, down. The new BK Bacon Double Home Style Melt, better than mom can make. Oh, honey, it's Gorman. He's having problems at work again. Mm-hmm. Watch and control your home TV with Slingbox anywhere you can get an internet or cellular connection. You should have traded that guy a long time ago. Fired. Stay. Fired. Slingbox. Seize him! If we can't get this guy, how are we supposed to get these guys? Get a free Shrek fairy tale with specially marked packages of Energizer Max batteries. Energizer keeps going and going and going. Back in Annapolis, the Navy midshipmen with a 28 14 lead on Northern Illinois as they take. Their first possession of the second half into the end zone. Kevin Imanalolo, the offensive line coach. Teams up with Todd Spencer to coach the linemen. Their guys did a great job that time. Just under five minutes, completing an 80 yard drive. Jared Bryant capping it off with his fourth touchdown of the season. Joey Bullen will kick off for the mids. Adonis back deep. Adonis from the 12. They fake the reverse, 20, 25. Wow, he is set up on special teams. Wes Oberlander. Oh, he's filling it. Down the field, or check it, Schaefer, rather, <laughs> to make the stop 49. Craig Schaefer, the sophomore out of Fairfax, Virginia, and the great 6A program at Robinson High School. Schaefer lays the wood here. I mean, you talk about textbook tackling. Head in the front. Gets the hips through and he says, I'm the big boy after it. <laughs> Gets the double flex. I mean, look like a heat seeking missile. That's football. Northern Illinois on offense. First down and 10. They give it to Anderson. Pospisil again coming along for the ride. This time at the 32 gain of four. Second down and six yards to go. And Ryan Morris. Not a bad first half, Scott, for Northern Illinois. Yeah, he hasn't got them in trouble yet, and they're not really asking him to go out and win the game. He's been real efficient. I like the play call, and I think they're making the formation somewhat exotic, which they're not coming out just straight two tight ends and allowing Navy to tee off on him. Second down and six from the 32. And again, it's Anderson coming left side. Got a big hole. Pospisil makes the stop, but not before. He gets up to the 40-yard line. He'll have another first down. The big thing was they got Morris going early in this football game, meaning short little throws. He did a nice job. That's actually his first pass of the game. Hitting Simon along the side, and there's the touchdown. You look at the poor tackle by Edwards right there, and this is the only really bad decision he's made. Watch the little deflection right there. He tried to force it. Thrasher came up with the pick. But hey, all in all, I thought he's played pretty well. He's impressed me. Feel in motion, left to right across the formation. Motion by Northern Illinois. They move early. It'll be a five-yard penalty against the Huskies and puts them in a first and 15. Again, perhaps the case of hearing a different Before the play started, false start on the offense. Number 50. That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. Those are drive killers. Eddie Adamski, the... Center, the sophomore, whistled for the penalty. 
pretty penalty free game here so far only three between the two teams. Maybe of course third of the nation in penalties per game. Here's Anderson stutter step to the right side. Good change of direction gets that five yards back. It'll bring up second down and ten. Corey Johnson and Pospisil on the stop. Ross Pospisil now with 14 tackles in this football game. He's been really active early, as has Walsh, but you know, Anderson's feet. I mean, his ability to pop outside, it really works for every yard that he gets. Probably ran about 17 yards to pick up four there. Corey Johnson remaining in at the striker spot for Ram Vela. Johnson. A couple of good plays in that first half. Navy backing off the linebackers now. Moore, slight roll and pressure from behind. Throws underneath. Lewis the catch at the 45. Just across the 45. It'll bring up third down and a short five for Northern Illinois. Swimsat comes up limping and runs across the end star toward the sideline for the midshipman. Matt Humiston will come in for it. Here you see Wimsat limping off. It's that time of year, Pete. You know, 10 games in. I mean, you know, guys get nicked. You know, how long can they hang in there? It's about rotating, keeping guys fresh. It's a tough one defensively in the secondary. You had 10 different starters back there for the mids this year. Northern Illinois 0 for its last five on third down. Morris back to throw underneath Johnson or checking Anderson. He's a yard short of the first down at the 49. That's a case where Anderson just doesn't run the pass route long enough. The simple fundamental fact of running beyond the marker to get the play. Yeah, this is a tough call right here. I mean, I mean, you look at it, fourth and one, you're down two scores. Navy came out to start the second half, drove it right down the field. Last thing you could do is get behind three scores. You're two and eight. What do you got to lose? I mean, you got to back like Anderson. Don't get him between the tackles. Get him on the outside. He probably can make three people miss alone. Two for two today on fourth down. Missing on their last six on third down. Anderson, first down across midfield into Navy territory. Nishak makes the stop for the midshipman along with Pospisil. This is a good counter action, meaning they're going to pull this left side of the line over to the right. Just wall off Pospisil. He just gets enough on him right there. If Pospisil could have read that a little earlier, he could have had came on inside. But this is the backside right there. Good job by Anderson. I mean, that's cold bird miss right there. You got to get that block. You're right, because Anyabaga was slow getting over there on the pull for Northern Illinois. Fake the side on the reverse. It's Anderson up the middle. Gains 10. Close to should have the first down. We'll see about the spot. Very close. Here. So far, good job by the Huskies answering the call here. They'll mark him about a less than a half a yard short second down and one coming up after the gain of nine Anderson over 100 yards on the day now now this is the tough part here as a defender watch right there the fake to the receiver coming just freezes the secondary you saw Thrasher right there had to give him a peek to make sure he didn't have the football before he came inside on Anderson Anderson on the second down carry Nishak and Fella on the stop should have the first down and Northern Illinois mounting a pretty impressive drive here. Their first drive in the second half. We're already down to the 603 mark here of this third quarter. Anderson with his seventh career 100 yard game. The reason you run that fake receiver, you know, reverse coming across is there's always somebody up top. There's a coach that's watching, seeing how are they reacting on that backside. Now that's the third time we've seen it. Don't be surprised by the end of this quarter if you see the reverse. Anderson cutting back against the grain. Like Humiston coming in from the linebacker spot with Wyatt Middleton. Getting down to the 35-yard line. That is the 29th carry of the day for Justin Anderson. And along with four receptions, how much is how much? And here comes Anderson. Well, I he's think he's telling you himself. You know, yeah. Tap the helmet a little bit, takes himself out of the game. From Joe Novak, I want that guy back in the game. Like, no, Somebody get Justin. him some oxygen, get him some water, and get him back shot. out there. Took a, a shot, shot on his hip. Yeah, David Bryant, his replacement, had 100 yards against Kent State last week. So a capable backup, and Bryant gets his first touch of the football right side inside the 35 to the 32. It'll bring up a third down for Northern Illinois. They need just before the 27 for a first down. You see David Bryant. Like Anderson, just a sophomore, had a buck ten last week. That's career best. Sophomore out of St. Louis, Missouri, where he played at the Ladue Horton Watkins School. 
And this is a good spot in the game for him to get some carries. I mean, if anything, it keeps Anderson fresh. If not, you spell him for a series and get that feeling back in the, in the back. Once you take a helmet to the back, I mean, it lingers with you for about 15, 20 minutes. Morris to throw on third down and a diving catch by Davis at the 24 yard line. Spectacular catch by Brent Davis. Now there's where you fire the football. That's a heck of a throw by the young quarterback. And he's looking left all the way and he unleashes a bullet. But that's wow. that ball was coming. great concentration. <laughs> Leaves his feet. And while he's in the air, what he does is he turns his shoulder underneath. So that's the first thing to hit the ground instead yep. of the ball, instead of us getting a review. Great catch by the junior there, Britt Davis, out of Broadview, Illinois, for the Riverside Bookfield. Northern Illinois. I don't think they had enough time out. I don't think they had enough guys on the field. Take a timeout. Navy 28, Northern Illinois 14. Huskies driving on CSTV. It's the season to shop, and the Red Tags are coming back for the Buick Pontiac GMC Red Tag event. And right now, they're bringing the best values of the season. Look for the Red Tag and get 0% financing for 60 months on remaining 2007 Pontiac, Buick, and GMC models. That's 0% financing for five full years on all 2007 cars, light-duty trucks, and SUVs while supplies last. The Red Tag event. See some red, save some green. This is you after an energy drink. Unfortunately, so is this. Why do energy drinks make you crash? One minute you're wired up, the next you feel worse than before. The answer is large amounts of sugar and caffeine. That's why you should try a new liquid energy shot called Five Hour Energy. With Five Hour Energy, you can leave grogginess behind and sail through your day without feeling jittery, tense, or you know. That's because 5-Hour Energy contains a powerful blend of B vitamins for energy, amino acids for focus and better mood, and enzymes to help you feel it faster. There's zero sugar, about as much caffeine as a cup of coffee, and only 8 calories. The 2-ounce shot takes just seconds to drink, and in minutes you're feeling awake, alert, and productive. And that feeling lasts for hours. So if your energy drink makes you crash, switch to 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. Find out if 5-Hour Energy is right for you. It's available at these fine stores. Or for more information, go to 5-HourEnergy.com. Brian Morris, a sophomore for Northern Illinois out of Carroll Stream, Illinois, conducting a fine response here to Navy's touchdown drive, Scott. And that's the key. I mean, these kids are playing hard. Two and eight, sign of a well-coached team. Great respect for Joe Novak. The play action, Morris sold it. Throws downfield for Simon. Got it. Touchdown. Ryan Morris with a sensational play action fake. We just talked about faking that reverse, and that's part of it. I mean, you freeze that free safety, and that's all they needed. Watch Cool Hand Luke here, though. Ryan Morris. You, you, first, you have to worry about Anderson, and then you casually sell the fake to Davis. And then just lay the ball out across field. That, that's a great throw. He puts it on the other side of the field and allows his guy to go get it. Extra point is up, and it is through. <laughs> great play action fake results in Simon's second touchdown. Maybe by seven on CSTV. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels, from rock to pop, hip-hop to country, all 100% commercial free. Get the best sports, like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio. I've got these neighbors who borrow tools. Uh, now when I say borrow, I mean they keep them forever. Saw here, a file there, every screwdriver. And it's not like they use them. And one day, everything came back. Now here's where it gets weird. Suddenly, things were getting fixed. Their projects completed. And then, then I discovered their secret. All those project solutions were in one box. 
the Dremel Duo Two Tool Kit. It's got a Dremel Stylus high speed rotary tool. That's how they did that. And now Dremel has a driver. Wow! I think it's my turn to go over and borrow some tools. Get your own Dremel Duo, driver or stylus at your local hardware store and home center, including Lowe's. Plus, visit buydremelduo.com for details on how to get this multi-tool free. Do more with Duo. Third quarter action, each team with a possession, each team with a touchdown, and cool hand Luke at quarterback. Watch the cell right there, just calmly sitting there with his back turned to the defense. That's, that's something a third or a fourth year player does. Now watch, right here. Ho-hum about it. He could have some guy bearing down the middle right there, getting ready to lay a <laughs> lick on him, and he wouldn't have known. Look at him, and he, and he knows. He's like, yeah, that was a good play, guys. What? Got a little bit, Great play. Be a little bit gutsy <laughs> to play that position. Fine day for Morris under uh, adverse circumstances, having to take the place of Dan Nicholson out with a concussion. Morris had only thrown 48 passes coming in for 269. Today he's thrown for 141 and two scores in the kickoff. Campbell going to bring it out from five yards deep. Back up the middle, 20. Reggie Campbell out to the 35-yard line. Terrific return by the super senior for Navy. Gets it all the way out to the 36-yard line. And it's Shipman now in possession. Jared Bryant. Find out he's ready to take this all on. I mean, we've seen pretty good play from him today. Made some nice throws when he's been asked to, and he's going to have to make one more play here before the end of this football game. Off the right side, the pitch, Singleton. Singleton up near midfield, spun out of bounds by Tranchantella. And Navy has another first down, their 18th of the game. It's a nice pitch right there by Bryant. You look at what Jared Bryant has done today from the quarterback position. He's managed the game well. You see him reading the fullback, springing it for the big run right up there at the middle. He protects the football, and that's the key right there getting in for the last stretch, breaking the point of the goal line. And here he is, similar play here. Pounds it down inside the 45-yard line. It's a gain of four, brings him second and six. But Scott, to your point that you made before the game, he has to play turnover free. Right. So far, he has done that for well, the midshipmen. Besides the one time when he took too long to pull the ball out of Katani's gut, and you know that almost caused a fumble. Right. But if I'm Paul Johnson right here, I try and get the ball to these slot backs on the corner. Northern Illinois has not stopped any of these guys on the outside by the sideline. Here, here it comes. Jim. Outside, Shun White dragged out of bounds by Bice and Tranchitello. He'll gain maybe a yard down to the 44. They need to get in between the 40 and 39 for the first down. That time, Bice did a good job from his end yeah. spot, not crashing down, but coming out to keep the containment. And as a defender, you should be able to tee off on that somewhat. When they put those guys in motion, you know it's coming that way. So you've got to get flow of those linebackers going to the side of the motion. That's the first time we saw good penetration up front on the corner good run support and get to the football sharp to the bottom of the screen Campbell and Teal to the top throwing underneath trying to hit Serban Singleton well covered and incomplete brings up fourth down and we'll see what Paul Johnson elects to do here will he forego the punt yes he will he's sending Shun White into the ball game with a play he's gonna run the option play clock hasn't started yet so they've got plenty of time Three minutes to go in the quarters. The play stops on the incomplete pass. Again, they need to get just inside the 40, just short of the 39 for the first down here. Ball spotted at the 44. Bryant rolling to his left. Has a man open in the flat, doesn't see him. Now throws underneath, and Washington drops the ball. He had Singleton open in the flat as he chose to run up the field. And then tried to throw it late to Washington, who sprung free, and he drops the ball. Just a little uncomfortable. Even on third down, he awkwardly backed out from center. Here, they roll him out, and that's the tough part about being a right-hander. You need to get your shoulders square, be a little decisive. And Washington's got a catch at. And I see Singleton in the flat right there. He gets the first. That one right there is just an easy spot route. So the Northern Illinois defense stops Navy on fourth down. Now looking to tie Ryan Morris. 
Gives it to Anderson. Left side has a hole up the midfield. Gains six on first down, second down, and four. Yeah, how can you not run this guy? Now all of a sudden you get him fresh a little bit. You go back to what's worked for you. That's Justin Anderson. Justin Anderson now with 124 yards on the day. His 30th carry, Mr. Zolak. He, he hasn't really sprung the big one, Pete. You know, the 25 to 30 yarder when you see guys really start to pad their stats up. I mean, it's just been chipping away, methodical. His longest run, 14 yards today. And it's Anderson again off that reverse motion. Dancing inside Navy territory. He's going to be about a half a yard short of a first down. It'll bring up third down and one. Play coming up for the Northern Illinois offense here as we count down under two minutes. Yeah, and this is a big drive here. You're down by 14. You do a nice job coming down, pulling off a nice play action pass, cutting it to seven. You get a big stand by your defense. Now offensively, you need to take advantage of it and drive the football. Third and less than a yard. Morris audibling at the line of scrimmage. Still has 10 on the play clock. Anderson left side. First down. Tripped up by Wyatt Middleton, but not before he gets inside the Navy 44 for a first down for the Huskies. Obviously, they're going to go to Justin Anderson here. Third and one. Even two down territory. If he doesn't get it, they're probably going for it again. But these are bigs. You see him pulling the big right guard again. Finally gets a hat on the hat on Irv Spencer filling the hole. Anu Boagu with a great block there, as you mentioned, Scott, on uh, look Spencer at, to free Look up. at the cushion at the top of your screen. Ten-yard cushion. Morris to David Bryant into the ball game. Chopped down. Ball comes out. The umpire going to whistle him down, though. Get a late whistle, but... I think they got the call right there. He's definitely down. Gets down to the 40-yard line. Gain of four and first down. And Anderson comes right back after a quick blow. Anderson has touched the ball 36 times today. Looks like they put some hip pads in on him. There's Bryant, Frazier, and Walsh hitting. Yeah, the legs are down. Yes. And then the ball sports out. Ball comes out. It's a good call. Good job by the umpire. Mark shoot. Here's Anderson, carry number 33. And Ross Pospisil with about his 45th tackle of the day. We have called his name an awful lot for Navy on that defensive side. The quarter now down to 17 seconds, likely the last play. That is the 16th tackle of the day for Ross Pospisil. Active. Get the big stop down on the goal line, like you said. And the clock is going to run out here on the third quarter. Good one, shaping up for the final. 15 minutes of play. It's Navy 28, Northern Illinois 21. Back with the fourth in a moment on CSTV. Why do you always get the first? Because I have the higher hey, point. Hey, hey, It's Bobby Bowden. I'm going to touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Part of Allstate Your Choice Auto Insurance. Are you in good hands? Own a timeshare or campground membership? Turn it into cash. Timeshares only got us our full asking price before our next monthly payment was due. Timeshares only is the nation's largest, number one, most successful timeshare agency, representing properties from the biggest names in the industry. No one sells more timeshares. Call now and receive a free information kit, including 10 secrets to timeshares. You owe it to yourself to work with the best. Don't delay. Call 800-690-9294. It's held every four years. Europe's biggest tournament, European Championship 2008 qualifiers. Follow the three Lions as one of the most talented squads in Europe, boasting world-class superstars. Terry, Gerard, and Lampard fight their way through qualifying for a claim of the right to be Europe's best. Now the goal scoring run continues. Cheer England on their road to Austria and Switzerland 2008. Team England European Championship 2008 qualifiers. Live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. What are you doing? Making a call. To who? Allstate. Uh, you want to think about that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Idiot. 
Back in Annapolis, Navy clinging to a 28-21 lead here against Northern Illinois. Ross Pospisil, the sophomore out of Temple, Texas. Temple high, 16 tackles. A career best for the mids today. And another big stop coming up here for Navy's defense as Northern Illinois looking to convert here. Third down and five. They need to get just inside the 34-yard line for the first down. His backers have been active up around the line of scrimmage, picking their gap, shooting it. And of course, he had the big stuff down there on the goal line before it got overturned for the touchdown. Northern Illinois has dominated time of possession through three quarters. That's the game plan Joe Novak wanted coming in. Here they are at third and five, and they run Anderson left side. Anderson is chopped down at the 39-yard line. And Wyatt Middleton right there again, coming up from his safety spot to make the big tackle. That's a heck of a job sniffing this thing out by Wyatt Middleton. You look at him in center field on your screen. He reads run all the way, runs right through, keeps his head out in front of Justin Anderson. And Justin Anderson has done such a good job of making that first guy miss by juking him with the move, freezing him. Wyatt Middleton stayed with it, and they're going for it here. Wyatt Middleton had 14 tackles in the win over Notre Dame. His eighth stop of the day there. Fourth down for Northern Illinois. Feel the man in motion. Morris play action. Going to roll it out here to the right. Throws it over the middle, and it's caught by Simon at the 31-yard line. First down, Northern Illinois. Big throw again, Ryan Morris. Big throw by Ryan Morris, but more importantly, big block by Justin Anderson off the play action fake. Getting his quarterback an extra second to find the big guy in the middle. You look at him right here. Watch him be stiff right there. Gets a little hat on Villa. That's actually Walsh. That's a heck of a catch by Simon, too. It's fourth of the day. And Walsh, a guy that's been in the backfield all day. So on first down from the 31, it's Anderson coming right side, looking for a hole. Jumps on through. Mosbisil, the first man on the scene. Do you think Anderson could throw? If he could, he could throw one right here, right now, with the way they're running to him. I mean, you want to talk about the flow of a defense and guys coming out of the secondary to try and get a jump on this guy in the corner. If they just ran a little toss fake into the boundary, if he shows run, I mean, they could go with the halfback pass. Simon and Davis to the top of the screen. Twin tight ends, and Anderson, the single setback. Second down and six. It's Anderson off the right side, chopped down at the 25-yard line. Brought down by Blake Carter coming up from the secondary. As you mentioned, Scott, those secondary guys really selling out on the run here. Got to get off the field, though. Somebody's got to make a play. Somebody like Johnson in the first half who gets the tip, Thrasher gets the pick. Somebody's got to make the big play here to get him off the field. Third down and four. They need to get just short of the 21. And it's Anderson, 25, 24, chopped down right there. And a couple of yards short. See what Joe Novak does. 12 and a half minutes remaining here. Do you send the kicker on, or do you go for it? I don't think it's bad either way. I, I mean, you know you're going to get three points, but it's still a tough kick from the left hash, and that's what he's going to do. Similar down a distance to the last fourth down they went for, but they will send the field goal team on here. It looks like it'll be about a 42-yarder. If you miss it, you give Navy the ball at the 32. Mendick on. Made 11 field goals so far this year. Ball is down, the kick is up. Got it. And it's got the distance, and it is good. Mendick drills it from 42. <laughs> And that draws Northern Illinois to within four. 28-24. 11 minutes and 53 seconds to go. Chris Nenden, the senior, getting the Huskies closer on CSTV.
what happened to your home phone bill. All right, just in time, CBX. That low promotional rate you signed up for has disappeared. It's called the shell game, and the phone and cable companies think they can get away with it. Now you can save up to $300 a year on your phone bill. How? Vonage! Did your phone rate start here and keep going up? With Vonage, your rate starts low and stays low. Awesome service. I can take you where I want to. I can call internationally. I'm saving money by just having the phone line through them versus bundling. Plus, free calls to Europe and international rates as low as a penny a minute. And 25 premium features, all for just $24.99 a month. Enjoy crystal clear digital sound quality using your high-speed internet connection. Try Vonage for 60 days risk-free. Call 1-800-479-2409. That's 1-800-479-2409. 42-yard field goal against Northern Illinois. A little bit closer here in the fourth quarter. Mids by four. 11.53 remaining here in the fourth quarter of play. Mendick to kick off. 11 play, 33-yard drive. And again, Northern Illinois with a long, time-consuming drive here. It's another six minutes off the clock for the Huskies. They've held on to the ball just over eight minutes more than the midshipmen today. It's a rare, Scott. Yeah, and they've really protected the football. And, you know, they're moving to the sticks and converting not only third but fourth downs. Four for eight on fourth down today for Northern Illinois. And Nick the kick, he boots it. Singleton from the three. Singleton back up to the 20. 25, hit hard at the 30-yard line. Hangs on to the football. Navy will go on possession at the 32. There you see a very special guy for the Northern Illinois team. And talk about a great story, Sergeant Jake Kaufman. 23-year-old redshirt freshman out of German Valley, Illinois. He spent four years in the Marine Corps, then enrolled at Northern Illinois. He's also still, by the way, a member of the active reserves. He was deployed to Iraq twice, promoted three times, got to the rank of sergeant, and actually made it up to a second team defensive end spot, was playing before suffering a foot injury against Idaho that he had to have surgery on and end his season. Here's Jared Bryant getting it across the 45, up to the 48. And because of his time in the Marine Corps, Kaufman really wanted to come on this trip, and Joe Novak obliges because usually, in this case, a guy that's a freshman who's injured, not dressing, wouldn't make the road trip. But Novak, sensing how important it was to Kaufman, brought him along on the trip. Yeah, it's a classy move, and obviously respect for the academy. And I know their plane was delayed yesterday. They were going to tour the yard here, but they only had enough time because it was obviously gets dark a lot earlier now being you know, almost winter time here they took a quick trip through on the buses you know down by the capitol building navy has a man down as bryant takes it across the 50 to the 49 anthony gaskins is down on the field he finally gets up but dr jeff fair and d jones arrive on the scene to take a look at him and since they come out he has to come off for at least one play yeah doc maybe a little quick getting out there that forces the player to come off Andrew McGinn, who, of course, was hurt a couple of weeks ago. Paul Bridgers has been starting at right tackle for him. Now McGinn will come in and play the left guard spot here for Paul Johnson. So it doesn't matter. Up front, you shuffle guys around. Everybody's got to play. Same way in that backfield. Second down at seven. In fact, that left side now, you've got Bridgers playing with Curtis Bass. Bryant on the option, Zerbin Singleton, run out of bounds, far side, 45-yard line. Melvin Rice runs him out of bounds. It'll bring up a third down and about three. Still picking up five damaging yards here. And, you know, even though it seems like they, they held him down, you get Zerbin on the outside, Zerbin Singleton outside. If you look at the good tackle, that's a good form tackle that rarely have we seen this Husky defense come up, hit and wrap, and get these slot backs out of bounds. Josh Meek back into the Navy lineup along the left side. It's Meek and Bass on the left side. McGinn and Bridgers on the right with Harper the center. Here's Bryant. Tripped up from behind. He falls forward. He's going to have enough for the first down. Perkle almost had him, Scott, in the backfield a yard deep. But Bryant able to run out of the tackle and go to the 41 for the first down. Yeah, and obviously right now you do want to score. You want to make this a two-possession game, meaning you're going to score the touchdown. 
Bad to Jared Bryant. Quick play, quick fake to the fullback. Does a good job stepping out of the tackle. A little delay right there. That's a great effort trying to get in the backfield right there. A people, but you know, he steps through it. First down at the 41 yard line. Count down to the 10 and a half minute mark. Jared Bryant closing in on 100 yards. First pivot on the option. Jumps over a man. Gains nine. That'll put him at the 100 yard mark right there as he gets down to the 32 yard line. As a blocker up front, you got to expect when Jared Bryant's running the option that he can spring it up in the middle at any time. So you need to stay on your block. Just a little reverse option. He sees a crashing end down right there. That's a good decision, getting it up and inside. He's going to bring up a second down and one from the 32 yard line. Josh Allen coming down from the outside. So the NIU defenders really start to take chances now, you know, guessing where this option attack is coming. Jared Bryant with his first career 100 yard game and a career high today. Left side, Bryant inside the 30, down to the 27 yard line. And he'll have another Navy first down. Both teams responding well offensively. I mean, we've seen some nice drives here to start the second half. Five minute drive, six minute drive, four minute drive. Jared Bryant now continuing his fine day, 20 for 105. Bryant again puts it in, reverses his pivot, down inside the 15, spun down at the 12 yard line. It'll be a gain of 15 for the Navy quarterback. His ability to make people miss off the option right here on the inside. Right there, that's just that little block by Zerbin Singleton. And as I said, some of these offensive linemen, you got to stay awake when Jared Bryan elects to run it up inside. You look at Big Antron Harper pushing guys up on the inside. That's coming off the ball as a center. A little something different there, too, Scott. Normally it's to the fullback and they continue right. He's faking right to the fullback and then running back to the left. Two straight times. Bryant popped initially at the line of scrimmage, keeps it himself down to the 11, gain of one. It'll bring up second down. And nine. Not that the clock is a factor for Navy, but at this point you're driving it right now. You can see that that NIU defense starting to get tired. Guys bending over, putting their hands on their hips. And the problem is, is they you watch don't, that clock. They, you want to milk it. And, and they don't have a lot of subs because their subs are the ones who are now playing too. Here's Bryant. Rolls to the right. Ballard out in front. Bryant can't get the corner. Outstanding play by Tranchatella, the sophomore linebacker, to make the play. Tranchatella had the big interception last week to preserve the win on her own 10 yard line. Jared Bryant, little rollout. I don't know if this was called pass at all, but I think he was going to run the whole way. Tranchatella, good job coming off the block. Takes on Adam Ballard right there, goes through the block, and he's able to get the Bryant. Tranchatella with his eighth stop of the day. So they lose a yard. It's third down and 10. Eight minutes to go here, fourth quarter, maybe by four. Jared Bryant, reverse pivot on the option. Pitches right side, Singleton. Singleton sprinting into the checkerboard end zone. Touchdown, Navy. 12 yards out. Anytime Zerbert Singleton gets the ball outside that tackle box, good luck trying to tackle this guy. I mean, that's north-south running right there. Doesn't make a move. And these slot backs have such low centers of gravity, it's tough to get them down on the ground. You got to go down at their legs. You can't hit these guys high. Extra point by Harmon is up. And it is good. It's a Navy response to the Northern Illinois field goal. Zerbin Singleton, his third of the day in over 100 yards. Navy by 11 on CSTV. Now get big arms, a ripped chest, and cut abs with the perfect push-up. The perfect push-up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the perfect push-up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of a push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps,
shoulders, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. You'll be ripped in no time. Get big fast. Call right now for the perfect push-up. Call 1-800-640-6823. How does Emergency boost your health and your energy? With a powerful formula built on a thousand milligrams of vitamin C to give your immune system a fighting chance. Emergency. Feel the good. If we can't get this guy, how are we supposed to get these guys? Get a free Shrek fairy tale with specially marked packages of Energizer Max batteries. Energizer keeps going and going and going. in Annapolis for the 34th time in school history. Navy with two guys over 100 yards. Jared Bryant with a buck 20. Zerbin Singleton 11 carries for 101 yards. He caps off the 68 yard four minute and two second drive. Scott. When you score touchdowns, why do you have to cover kicks after that? Shouldn't be allowed to sit on the bench, take the helmet off, talk the bomb on TV. He's a football player. These guys do everything. 9.2 yards of carry today for Zerbin Singleton. Mullins kick off. Near side, 10 yard line, Adonis 25 has an alley, tripped up at the 33 yard line. And Serban Singleton makes Serban Singleton. Singleton. That's right. Now, Northern Illinois, the volley back to them, and Justin Anderson, 37 carries, yeah, a little 139 busy. yards. He's been a little busy today, but this is the go to guy. He's the one that makes people miss. You look at him here, get on the outside on the corner. Yeah. If I'm Joe Novak, I continue to feed this guy until he drops. He gives you the best chance to win, whether it's on the screen pass, hitting the quick hitter up the middle like he just did there. And right now, they got to find a continued ways to get him the rock. Anderson trying to spin out of a Corey Johnson tackle. Gets him up near the line of scrimmage. He falls forward to the 36. Gain of one. It brings up a second down and nine. Johnson ain't getting half the tackle there. It's a good job by Walsh on the outside, forcing that run inside. Justin Anderson with a season high for rushing attempts. He had 35 against Idaho. That is 38. Yeah, but the big thing yeah. is, and people think that, well, you know, maybe he's getting overworked here. The great backs get better the more they carry the football in games. And here he is, and Blake Carter has him back at the 35-yard line. He'll lose a half a yard on the plate. It'll bring up a third down and nine for the Huskies. And that's the thing. He's a one-man wrecking crew right now. And at some point, Ryan Morse is going to have to make a throw to not only get his team back in the game, but you look at the secondary pressure coming up, Blake Carter from the outside. We saw Wyatt Middleton come out from the middle, and you saw him right there. And Pospisil with the good read on that. Pospisil has been around the football today. I and mean, the first one guy that sticks out on his defense is number 51. Simon in motion to the bottom of the screen. Twins to the bottom. Morris fights off a man to try and screen it. And Anderson is swallowed up by guess who? Ross Pospisil out of Temple, Texas is there again. That's tough right there. Third and long. Everybody in the stadium knows you're going to the screen pass. Ryan Morris wanted to throw this ball a little bit earlier. Right there, got a little bit of pressure, which forced him to recock the arm. And then there was a delay getting the ball to Anderson. And when you run that screen and you got Lyman pulling out in front, any little delay is to getting that back to the, getting the ball to the back, blows the whole thing up in the backfield. Pospisil with his 19th tackle of the day. End over end punt, Campbell. Drops the ball, but I believe he got it back at the 34, and he does, sitting on the ground. <laughs> Timeout on the field. Five and a half minutes to go. Ross Possible still all fired up for a Navy stop. They lead by 11 on CSTV. I've got these neighbors. 
who borrow tools. Uh, now, when I say borrow, I mean they keep them forever. Saw here, a file there, every screwdriver. And it's not like they use them. And one day, everything came back. Now, here's where it gets weird. Suddenly, things were getting fixed. Their projects completed. And then, then I discovered their secret. All those project solutions were in one box. The Dremel Duo Tool Tool Kit. It's got a Dremel stylus, high-speed rotary tool. That's how they did that. And now Dremel has a driver. Wow! I think it's my turn to go over and borrow some tools. Get your own Dremel Duo, driver or stylus at your local hardware store and home center, including Lowe's. Plus, visit buydremelduo.com for details on how to get this multi-tool free. Do more with Duo. This is my playbook. 300 Jet X Lego Z scene. The best play here is probably at a regular, we can just go change right, A right, 2 Jet Dancer Fake 40 X Shallow Cross. You sound funny. You sound funny. If I'm reading them bedtime stories and they're not falling asleep, I go right to the playbook. It puts everybody to sleep. <laughs> y scramble to red left swap tight gloves, Z right, sprint right, G, U corner half back flat. CSTV Football Nation has been brought to you by Sirius Satellite Radio. Hear what you've been missing on Sirius, the best radio on radio. By Under Armour, the advantage is undeniable. And by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Back in Annapolis, Navy with a 35-24 lead, five and a half to go. What's going on in Football Nation right now? Lots to take. Find out on the game room coming up next here on CSTV. Our crew tracking all the live games and breaking down everything that's happened with attitude and inside information. Game room, our take on everything you need to know only on CSTV. Former Navy coach Charlie Weatherby with a big win today as Louisiana Monroe beating Alabama all across the 40. Late flag though from the umpire, perhaps a holding call coming up here against the midshipman. That'll kill you at this point. Five and a half left. All you want to do is run out the clock. And you start this drive with a holding call. Holding well, Scott, well, I mean, on the offense, number 63. The foul penalized 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. You and I have done uh, six Navy games now this season, and every time we see them getting a holding penalty, especially early in the possession, it usually dooms the possession because it backs them up 10 yards immediately and puts them in first and 20. Oh, sure, and especially when, you, when your offense is predicated on running the football, which even in more of a bind, and Paul Johnson's still trying to work the side judge to find out what Antron Harper did there. Oof. Brian takes a pounding that time as he bounces off of Alex Kuba. Now we get a late penalty flag coming in from the back judge. We have a late hit here on Zerbin Singleton. He came in and kind of took the referee out. After the play was over, there's a dead ball. Personal foul on the offense, number 28. Foul penalized 15 yards. Second down. Navy staff looking at the back judge trying to get an answer. He's just staring at him. Let's take a look at it. Zerbin Singleton gets penalized 15 yards here. Watch the bottom of your screen right here. Zerbin Singleton. Takes a guy down right there. Right in front of the ref. Seems like a good call. The play looked like it was over. So second down and long. Katsani gets it across the 20 up to the 21. They need to get all the way up past the 44 for a first down as we go under five minutes. Third and 23. How do you overcome third and 23? Well, you hope you get half it back. Put yourself in a good position at least, you know, get your defense out on the field, not at the 50. I mean, they've, they've gone backwards here first two plays. Certainly here with the rushing, you want to keep the clock on the move with an 11 point lead. And 
Bryant will do just that into the middle with Katani. He gets hit by Alex Krush. So at 418, the clock stopped. I believe Northern Illinois called a timeout. Yeah, they had they had two left. You got to waste one right there. Now, obviously, Navy running the football on third down. You have no choice but to take the timeout. They try to keep the clock moving. Fans better brew a strong pot of coffee because our football coverage keeps on rolling tonight at 7.30 and doesn't stop until the wee hours of the night. First up, we head to the West Texas for a Conference USA showdown between Southern Miss and UTEP. Then at 11, we've got action from the Big Sky State's biggest rivalry, Montana and Montana State. It's all tonight only on CSTV. Jeff Bauer, one of my favorite coaches to watch, the man at Southern Mississippi, sends his Golden Eagles down to West Texas tonight. Boy, Paul Johnson really letting his offense have it during that timeout. That's just critical That's errors. Six, I mean, what? the holding penalty, as we talked about, a first down, the holding penalty, and then, of course, uh, the, the late hit on Singleton. Well, when you think about one of the strengths, or the strength of this football team, it's, it's the offense and obviously the rushing attack. You want the football with five minutes left in the game because now the game's into your hands. All you got to do is just get two first downs and the ball game's over. It's about finishing games, and that's the point he's trying to convey to his football team. So now Navy will come on to punt. Fedito, who had punted just 12 times coming in, his third punt of the day. Navy, by the way, three penalties for 70 yards. Fedito. Gets it up and a good kick as he roots that one out of there. Simon all the way back inside of his 30 with a fair catch. What a great time for Pettito to come up with that boomer right there. Yeah, that's a 17 yard change right there because Simon was up over his 46 yard line. They thought they were going to get the ball somewhere around midfield, but right there, number 51, Ross Pospisil has been so active today. You take a look and see why. Reading his keys. Getting Justin Anderson down, and that's a tough guy to get down. It's not like there's, there's an easy target he can key off on. And he would have another tackle if the touchdown wouldn't have been, or the lack of touchdown wouldn't have been overturned earlier when it clearly looked like Anderson didn't get in. Morris loading it up, going left side. Davis goes up in the air, and he's going to be whistled out of bounds. Wow, what a catch by Davis, though. He went up with a guy underneath of him and came down hard. And they're going to hold him out this play. This is one heck of an effort. I mean, it's a high throw. First of all, you look at Ryan Morris. He's standing in the pocket. Just a high throw. And wow. You thought maybe did he get pushed out by the defender, but he would have definitely been out of bounds if he would have caught that. Heck of, heck of an That's effort. That's a great though, catch. He so. caught it. But, you know, his momentum took him out of bounds. It was not the defender. Morris scrambling out of the pocket. Wimsat in tow. He's out of the tackle box, so he can throw it away. And thus, no intentional grounding brings up third down and 10 from the 29. That's a good job by Morris getting outside the pocket. And as you said, Pete, throwing it away. And what he has to do is once you're outside that tackle box, you can throw it away, but it's got to be at the line of scrimmage or past the line of scrimmage, or else it becomes intentional grounding. Morris, 14 of 22 now on the day for 145. <laughs> Third and ten. Morris looking to his right. Communicating with his wide receivers. Twins to the bottom. Single receiver to the top. On third down. Back to pass. Has time. He's looking for Davis. And it's out of bounds. Knocked away by Greg Thrasher. Those are two tough routes. First of all, you saw Davis go to the left side. With those post corners. Those deep bow routes out to the sideline. Takes too long to develop. Too much time. They got to move the sticks. Something more across the middle of the field, you know, 12-yard in cut, screen pass, something just to get the drive started. Especially if you know you're going to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, you know, no need to go for the bundle there. You're, on sitting, third. Here, you're sitting here at fourth and ten. It's almost, you know, it's inconceivable to even attempt to convert this. Same formation. Here's Moore, straight drop on fourth down. Looking as Davis sits down nicely across the 40-yard line at the 45. First down, Northern Illinois. He proves us wrong. It's a good, confident throw sitting in the pocket. And 
We're going to see what he's made of here. Young guy, if he's been paying attention to what's been going on in practice as far as the no huddle, making sure his receivers are set. Morris back to throw, looking underneath. Simon dropped the football at the 49-yard line. So it'll bring up second down and 10. Scott, when you need long yardage, this is a much better route right here to get it done than the last one. Yeah, and he does a good job with his head controlling the free safety, keeping the guy to the left, which is, allows Davis to find that void in the defense. And That's what I'm talking line. about, laying the football in there, not trying to throw it through a brick wall. Offensive line gave him good pocket, good time to throw there. Second and 10 from the 45-yard line. Counting down to three and a half minutes. Morris across the middle. The ball is deflected and knocked away. Nearly picked off by Corey Johnson. Somebody's got to make a play. You know, it, it looks like the defensive backs have been somewhat improved this week. They're, they're around the place. They've made them in key spots. We've seen Thrasher get his hand in there at the last minute. Middleton coming out of the secondary. That's just a forced throw in the triple coverage. There's one, two, three, almost four guys there. Edwards, Thrasher, and Johnson are nearly intercepted. Third down and 10 again for Northern Illinois. Morris with time underneath, throws for the tight end. Beal, did he make the catch? Yes, he did at the 48-yard line, but it's only a gain of three. It'll bring up fourth down and seven. Beal and Beckner, the tight ends today, have basically been blockers. That's the first time we've seen one of them in a pass route catching the football. So fourth down, just short of the 49. Efficient on fourth down today, to say the least. They came in 12th out of 13th in the match. Yeah. See if they can get it done. Made plays when they had to. Backs against the wall now. Maybe he's going to call a timeout. 326 remaining. Paul Johnson wants to make sure the defense is set here. As the mids protect an 11 point lead with 326. Timeout to go. will be 30 seconds. 30 second timeout. These are cases right here where, uh, you know, your defense really should be on the field. Offense should have taken care of that drive. Ryan Morris, he's looked well. He's looked good today, Pete. I mean, he's really impressed me. I thought he's had nice poise, great play action fake to sell a touchdown. He put the ball in the spot right there. As receiver Simon makes a guy miss. That's off the big play action fake, off the fake reverse. Well, and his number's been called. And I thought he stepped up well. He has a good understanding of the offense. And He's managed the game well. There you see as both teams presenting backup quarterbacks today. Jared Bryant doing what Navy does best, running. Morris with 165 through the air. And again, the only miscue, the double-tipped ball that ended up being intercepted. So fourth down and six from their own 49-yard line. Morris back to throw. Some pressure. Crossing route underneath. Wide open Simon. Down to the Navy 41. Possibly still makes the stop. And it's a first down for Northern Illinois. And again, they'll keep the tempo picked up here. Down 11, needing two scores. And one timeout remaining. Clock starts once the sticks are set. There it goes. That time Simon, of all people, uncovered as he came across the middle. Trips to the top, single receiver Lewis to the bottom. Morris pump fakes down low, looks up to the top of the screen, looking for Simon, and he throws it over by the kicking net. And every time they come back to that underneath stuff inside, the quick little hitters, they've had success with that. And they get in a little bit of trouble when they go to the outside and deep. Simon's had a solid day, five catches for 100 yards now, two touchdowns. Talked this week uh, with him about his receivers coach, P.J. Fleck. And when I watched Simon, I saw Fleck when he played in Northern Illinois a couple years ago. Simon reminds me a lot of Fleck as a receiver. Doing a solid job today. Morris underneath looking for Beal. Flags in the middle of the field. And perhaps Nate Frazier held on the play as the flat two of them were thrown there. And it is. I think Nate Frazier was tackled on that play. Holding on the offense, number 77. That's a 10-yard penalty for the previous five. Replay second down. To Mayerbach, the sophomore backup left guard in the ball game. Keep your eye in the middle here. Right there on the left side of your screen. Right. 
You can see him pulling down on the back side of the shirt of Nate and just kind of rides his back down into the ground. Grabbing him up underneath the lead. Two points for the takedown of Bevel's wrestling. That's right. Brings up second down. And Long Morris starts to step up. Now throws it back to Anderson, who's blown up by Irv Spencer. That's a tough spot. <laughs> Justin Anderson won't be happy with the young quarterback after that one. <laughs> He's going to say, Ryan, throw that one away next time, please. Well, I think he gets it either way. Moore is sitting in the pocket, and he starts to run. He doesn't have to do that. And A.B. in a little bit of a prevent defense, only rushing three at the time. Third and 20. That's trying to make a play when it's not there. Morris back to throw. Got Turner up at the top of the screen, wide open, has him at the 40. Runs out of bounds at the Navy 37. It'll bring up fourth and six. 2.45 remaining the clock stops. Let's get back a good chunk right there. It's just a slot formation to the top. One guy in, one guy out. Johnson gets lost on the inside, stays with the inside receiver. That's a good job by Ryan Morris finding the outside guy. Almost looks as if maybe with someone in a zone coverage there, allowing the underneath, and Johnson just too far away from Turner. Perhaps his inexperience hurting him there. Can his defense get off the field on fourth down? Fourth and six. The answer is no. No. Lewis at the 29-yard line. And again, it goes back to the point you made earlier, Scott. It's fourth and six. If you're giving an 11 and 12-yard cushion, if the man runs the route right, it's a first down. And these are easy pickets right here for a quarterback. Five-yard cushion up top, and he doesn't really come up. I mean, you look at Carter. He doesn't make a break on the ball until he's too far 11 away. 11 yards off. Yeah, he's too far away to make a break on the ball. First and 10, the ball at the 29-yard line. 2.40 to go. Morris back to throw. Off of his back foot and throws that one away. He covers that time by the Navy secondary. They had Simon double covered. That time, Turner not able to get free, so Morris throws it away. 2.34 to go. Still down 11. Obviously, what may come into thinking here, if you're close enough, they've already hit a good field goal. You may take the field goal here, go for the onside kick, knowing full well you need to score plus the two-point conversion to have a chance to put it to overtime. Morris, second down and 10. Flag is down. Underneath, Simon. He will have or be close to a first down, but again, the flag thrown by the line judge at the start of the play. Somebody's offsides or they had a bad formation on the offense. Motion, Northern Illinois. So the Huskies have only been penalized three times today. Their fourth penalty hurts here because it would have been very close to a first down. Illegal motion on the offense, number 11. That's a five yard penalty. Replay second down. Marcus Lewis called for the motion. Not quite sure what he did. Sophomore in Gurney, Illinois. Played at Warren High. Getting the play now from Morris. They could have puddled up while the play was, the penalty was being administered. Now you're right, they should have called two plays. Second down and 15. Morris throws underneath Anderson. Anderson cuts it up the field. Down at the 31. Good collision there. And Northern Illinois is going to burn their last time out right here with 2.10 to go. Facing a third down at about 12. Now right now they're talking to Ryan Morris on the sideline and they've got to get two plays ready if they're intent on going for it if they don't pick up the first down on third down. So right now you need to at least be talking special teams here, get that unit ready to go on the sideline. Don't forget, you don't have timeouts, you can't stop the clock. And so if you hit a pass in the middle of the field and it's shy, you do want to kick, you've got to run that unit on without wasting as many seconds as you can because you're going to come back and try and get the onside. And, and to your point, maybe the fact that they call the timeout on third down here wow, because wow. of the two-play situation and reminding Morris because, again, he is a backup quarterback and a guy that hasn't had a whole lot of game experience mm -hmm. in running the two-minute drill and things of that nature, giving him 
in his mind exactly what to do here with a two play situation coming sure. up for Northern Illinois. 31 yard line. They need to get to the 19 for a first down. Third down and 12 coming up. 210 to go. Out of timeouts now are the Huskies. Morris back to throw. Has Anderson underneath. Has him at the 25. Quickly hit by Spencer. And it'll be a fourth down and six. And the field goal team is coming on. So subscribing to your theory, Scott, they're going to go ahead and take the field goal here. Still with a minute 53 to go. Clock moving. And then obviously try and go on side. He's already hit from 42. This one again from 42. From the right hash mark out of the hold by Jeff Fontana. Ball down and he hooked it way left. So sometimes the best laid plans don't always work out. That's tough, but you got to practice those situations where you're running a kicking team on. You're pressed and you can't have the, you don't have the right time to set up. I just 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 a poor hit here, Pete. He had drilled one earlier from 42 in this one, trying to hook it back. It's a good snap. It's a good hold. He just hit it off the meaty part of the foot, not off the toe. Kind of clubbed it. And he didn't even give that a chance. Kind of looked like one of my drives on the fairway. Way left. Here's Brian on the carry. Adding to his career high rushing total today. And with no timeouts remaining, maybe doesn't have to do a whole lot here more than kneel down in this situation. As long as they don't get a holding call or personal foul like they did in the previous series. Mids with the seventh win of the season coming their way. And obviously now a look ahead toward Army Navy. Coming up in two weeks. Northern Illinois is offside. Bryant keeps it himself. Wow, he takes a shot at the 40 yard line. Coming up from the secondary to hit him was Bradley Pruitt. I'm sure the offside penalty will be declined because the carry results in the first down. Take a look at our serious satellite radio player of the game, and none other than senior Zervin Singleton, 101 yards on the ground, 37 through the air, and three touchdowns today for the midshipmen. Forgot to tackle on the kickoff, too, and there's the big catch right there for Jared Bryant to keep drive alive. This guy was money on the corner all day today, Pete. Funny, we all have a kid with our producer, Steve Garrison, about his schedule and when he sleeps. He will sleep good tonight since there are no classes tomorrow. <laughs> Great gesture here by Paul Johnson. He gets senior Troy Goss into the game at quarterback. Also letting Ryan Capico get on the field, also a senior, and Goss will take the football as a senior. And down and close out the game here for the midshipmen. See Troy, the senior oceanography major out of Shelby, North Carolina. And a hard effort here today. Great effort by Joe Novak's team, two and eight coming in, but certainly played uh, as hard as you would expect any football team to do so. And Navy now turns its attention in two weeks to the Army Navy game. Our colleagues at CBS. We'll have that big affair two weeks from now in Baltimore. Just a little bit up I-95. Beautiful stadium. So the players will shake hands. Bids now seven wins on the season. Looking for win number eight against Army. A senior class honored here today. And there you see the mids. Shaking hands with Marine Jake Kaufman. It's still amazing to think, you know, even what Navy has overcome this year as far as injuries and you know, missing guys due to graduation. And obviously, they're always good on offense, but the problems they've had defensively to even be sitting here and saying, you know, you look forward to that game in two weeks against Army with the potential to win eight games to almost end your regular season at eight and four, heading to your fifth straight bowl game. Something to be pretty proud of. Yeah, and trying to win some of the things you had had to overcome. Try, and try this to team win has struggled. Fifth straight Commander Chiefs trophy as well, which they've already retained. Trying to win it outright. 
Time now for the alma mater. Class gesture by the Northern Illinois student athletes. They'll come over and stand behind the mids for the playing of the Navy Blue and Gold down on the field and for the seniors of this football program one last time here at Navy Marine Corps Stadium. of the plate now for the midshipmen as they win it here today by a final count of 35 to 24 against Northern Illinois and send their senior class out winners here at home. For Scott Zolak and our entire CSTV crew, I'm Pete Medhurst. For the latest scores, news, highlights, and analysis, log on to CSTV.com. This has been a presentation of CSTV, College Sports Television, the 24-hour College Sports Network from CBS Sports. So long from Annapolis, Maryland. We'll send you to the CSTV Fieldhouse for Game Room coming up after the break. It's winning here on CSTV 35-24. With Sirius Satellite Radio, you can hear what you've been missing. 69 music channels, from rock to pop, hip-hop to country, all 100% commercial free. Get the best sports, like NASCAR 24-7, the NBA, and every NFL game every week, everywhere. Get the biggest and best in talk and entertainment, including, of course, Howard Stern. Get over 130 channels and hear what you've been missing. Welcome to Sirius, the best radio on radio. The Navy midshipmen have assembled their troops once again to defend their position in Football Nation. With an exciting ground attack and a hard charging line, you don't want to be in the way when these gladiators of the gridiron come charging through. Don't miss the midshipmen sail to victory all season long on CSTV, the home of Navy football. The Ultimate Fighter Season 2 winner, Rashad Evans, will take his undefeated record into the octagon against the Ultimate Fighter Season 3 winner, undefeated Michael the Count Bisping, in a war to prove who belongs in the UFC light heavyweight elite. Also featuring UFC stars Spencer the King Fisher, Carl the Heat Parisian, and Houston Alexander. The Ultimate Fighting Championship presents UFC 78 Validation, live Saturday, November 17th, from Prudential Center in Newark, New Jersey, on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Ferocious Fernando Vargas and Ricardo El Matador Mayorga are two boxers who love to fight. The bad blood is still fresh from the last time they met. Now, the street fight moves to the ring on Friday, November 23rd. Unbelievable! What a fight! Vargas versus Mayorga, the brawl. Don't miss it. Friday, November 23rd, live on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. Vargas versus Mayorga on Channel 123. All right, it's time for Game Room. Navy with a nice win there over Northern Illinois. Welcome inside. Adam Zucker here hanging out with Trev Alberts. Solid win for the mids. We know they're always going to score. We know they're always going to allow someone to score. And you know they're always going to play for four quarters. And I think that's how you judge a good team. And consistent teams are teams that play for four quarters. I know it's an old cliche, but Paul Johnson consistently has his team ready. They play for four quarters. And Northern Illinois has not had a great season so far this year in the MAC, of course. But another win for Paul Johnson consistently. Get to look forward. Of course, they have Army coming up to win the Commander-in-Chief Trophy again, potentially for the fifth straight time. So an outstanding job. They dominated the other service academies. And, of course, they're off to the point set bowl. So what a great year again for Paul Johnson. And that one coming up December 1st against Army. More important than any bowl game is that they beat Army. And uh, we could just say our, our military is on the offensive. Uh, <laughs> let, let's just say, and I just mean football. 
But Army, despite 39 points, falling at the hands of Tulsa in West Point. Paul Smith for Tulsa, 391 passing yards in Air Force. Look at that. And Troy Calhoun, what an unbelievable job. His first year as a head coach, they win nine games. Of course, they beat Notre Dame. It'll be very interesting to see where they wind up when it comes bowl season. All right, let's uh, zoom out and take the big picture here. The national picture, LSU at Ole Miss, tough place to go. Matt Flynn on the option, keeps it himself, and LSU gets on the board first, capping a 98-yard drive. Ole Miss, still down seven, LSU punting. How about this, Marche Green catching it on the fly. So difficult sometimes as a defender not knowing where the ball is. you got to look up, catches it on the fly, 45 yards down the sideline, into the end zone for a touchdown. But LSU can play special teams as well. Forget 98-yard drives. How about a 98-yard return by Trenton Holiday? What a great move right there, and then he has flat-out speed. I mean, nobody's going to catch Holiday. Gets all the way down the field. Huge, 98 yards for the touchdown. Early in the third, the give to Keelan Williams, bouncing it outside to take it in for the score. It looked like LSU would be cruising, but it is a 10-point game right now. 27-17 in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech all over Miami. Look at that, 44-14. Randy Shannon's first year in charge of the Hurricanes, really slipping lately. And Kansas all over Gene Chizik and company, 38-7. Todd Reesing with four touchdown passes in that game. The Jayhawks just keep winning undefeated team you know it's interesting a lot of people are talking about this Jayhawk team they're saying well you know it's just this great team they've come together and had great chemistry I think the reality is this I think they have underrated talent I mean you can look at Chase Daniel of course at Missouri he's had a great season what has he done that Ton Reesing hasn't done at Kansas the point is this Kansas been there longer maybe, well he's been there longer but and he's done it probably more consistently but the, pro the point is a lot of people don't know enough about Kansas what you're going to find out is they do have talent underrated talent but they're still that great team have great chemistry they're gonna be really hard to beat I mean this is a very good football team and they're top 10 in basketball also well, we don't care about that no, we're football we don't. people no we don't but it was something Ohio State could brag about last year That's also right. and uh, they can also brag about beating Michigan again 14-3 was the final in this one not a whole lot of offense from anybody except from Beanie Wells 222 yards two touchdowns even got injured came back in and played Mike Hart limited to 41 yards Chad Henney completed under a third of his passes and uh, with that in mind we provide you with this information wow see what the offense did against the Buckeyes yeah I mean Ohio State defensively just really of course after that Illinois loss a couple weeks ago really went back to the basics and uh, just dominated the line of scrimmage got a lot of hits a lot of sacks did a great job on third down defense as you can see right there on 17 <laughs> percent outstanding again by Ohio State and again shutting down the run game of Michael Hart, a dominating performance all the way around for Ohio State defense. And both teams were coming back from losses. The Buckeyes, they lost to Illinois, who's playing with the most explosion in the Big Ten, thanks to Juice Williams. And here's Jeff Cumberland right here down the sideline. Just throw it up. The big fella goes up and gets it for a 48-yard gain. And Juice can run as well, putting Illinois on top 14 to nothing. 21-7 in the third. Juice. A lot of confidence again in Woo! Cumberland. Right down the middle. Splits two defenders. Big fella gets it in for the touchdown. Cumberland Farms opening up in the end zone. And then Richard Mendelhall. We've been saying his name all year, too. Yeah, physical runner. Breaks a couple tackles there into the end zone for an eight-yard touchdown. Tell you what, I think Illinois is a uh, prime contender for Big Ten champion next year. Well, I think they really are. Still a young team. Still learning to win under Ron Zook. But, man, at some point, this guy was laughed out of Gainesville, Florida. I mean, Ron Zook was a complete failure. Yeah, he was a good recruiter. Went to Illinois, continued being that very good recruiter. But I think the thing you have to give him credit is a lot of young players, and Juice Williams in particular, at the start of the season, was not playing very well. You can talk about coaches across the country. Ron Zook and his staff has developed this young talent. They've gotten better every single week, and you can't say that about a few other coaches around the country whose talent has not gotten better a la Notre Dame. Yeah, <laughs> Notre Dame, but they did get the big win yeah, against, they did. against right, well, Duke. It's a great day in South Bend. Uh, you talk about Ron Zook, so let's talk about Tim Tebow in Florida. Up against Florida Atlantic, and the special teams coming through here. Jory Sorrentino with the block. Marcus Manson scoops it up. He's going in to score. The Gators on top, 14-0. Now, Owls trying to get back in. Rusty Smith to Cortez Gant. And he's able to score 20 yards. Owls down 21-20. But Tim Tebow, another great game. As he's done all season, having to rally the team here. Cornelius Ingram for 26 yards for a touchdown. This time, Tebow again. Patient sits in the pocket. Goes back. Aaron Hernandez wrestles it into the end zone for a touchdown. 
Florida up 49 to 20. And they put in the backup. Cameron Newton shows that Tebow's not the only running quarterback going in from 24 yards out. Gators rolling in this one 59 to 20. Will you marry me? That's what Mikey Henderson said to his girlfriend before the game. Ian Johnson did it at the Fiesta Bowl first, okay? Was not the most original thing. No, Sean Marino, you got to be original when you propose. Yeah, you do. And, and here's a guy who's original. How about Andre Woodson avoiding pressure, getting it down? Keenan Burton brings it in, 36 yards for the touchdown. Taking advantage of that Marino fumble. Kentucky punting here, but Georgia blocks it. And they pounce on it, leading to a Thomas Brown score to take a 14 to 10 lead. And still on the prowl in the third. Here's Marino making up for it. Yeah, yeah, that fumble has to get to the outside, use his strength and power, picks up a nice run. Then Stafford here fakes the inside handoff. Hey, he can run a little bit, gets it into the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, he also threw two interceptions in this one, which allowed Kentucky to take that early lead. And Kentucky going down. Woodson brought down by that mean Georgia D. 24-13, dogs win. And if Tennessee would lose, that means Georgia would have control of its destiny, actually would win the SEC East because they don't play any more conference games. And Vanderbilt trying to do them the favor. Mackenzie Adams to Jeff Jennings, make it 17-9. Then Adams to George Smith, who goes up and grabs it. 24-9, Vandy in Knoxville. But Eric Ainge can throw the ball. Yeah, he's had a great year all year long. Here, Austin Rodgers finds him, splits two defenders into the end zone for a six-yard touchdown. They went for two, didn't get it. So here they are getting the lead. And it's Daniel Lincoln, who's hit some Clutch kicks this year from 33 yards away to put him up by one. Homer can clap. After a big Vandy return, Brian Honfeld with a chance to win it for Vandy. Oh, and it glances off the uprights, and the Vols hold on to win 25 to 24. And man, look at this one. It just gets worse for the Tide. Slipping to six and five, losing at home to UL Monroe. How's that? Yeah, well, I think first of all, Alabama actually dominated uh, you know, the line of scrimmage, had way more yards. Bottom line is it's turnovers. The other team didn't turn the ball over. Alabama had four turnovers, two interceptions for John Parker Wilson. This team is struggling. Now they go on the road play Auburn. Very mm -hmm. difficult way to end the year for Alabama. They got the Iron Bowl, and Georgia, of course, hoping that Tennessee loses to Kentucky next week. That would give Georgia the SEC East, which would probably provide the best challenge for LSU in the SEC championship game. But we still got to figure out the Big 12. Missouri and Kansas, they keep on winning. We showed you the Jayhawks. Here are your Tigers. Jeremy Macklin, usually on the receiving end from Chase Daniel. He can also return some kicks. What a great job right here. You speed, the, the speed, the young freshman. Really helped out in the return game as well. Obviously catching the ball as well from Chase Daniel. 99 yards down the sideline into the end zone for a touchdown. 14-3 up on Kansas State there. Then Daniel goes to work. Finding Macklin. Wide open for the 44-yarder. How's a guy get open like that behind the defense? 35-18 against Kansas State and then Daniel to Martin Rucker shades of Tim Tebow Missouri winning big out of the Big East UConn winning 30 to 7 they're still in contention for a BCS bowl game depending on what West Virginia does the rest of the way and Rutgers holding on against Pittsburgh 20 to 16 close down the stretch. Some other teams we've got to talk about here. Boise State setting up a big matchup with Hawaii next week with a 58-14 win over Idaho. That game was 17-14 at one point. And Wisconsin, it's still close for the big Paul Bunyan X. Yeah, they get kind of rebounding a little bit. Obviously, Brett Bielema didn't have quite the year he wanted, but here at the end of the season, getting some wins, setting up for a nice bowl game. All right, we've still got lots to talk about. We're going to focus on the SEC. we got this chair over there, and it needs someone in it. Brian Curtis! Brian Curtis, he's on his way out here. SEC Game Room coming up next. Let's go, Brian. The beat is back. Three ball, corner pocket. College basketball brought to life. Don't miss a single beat. South Padre Invitational Semifinals, Friday, starting at 7.30 on CSTV. NCAA Men's Basketball, Possession, CSTV. It can be a little awkward when your friend tells you he's been diagnosed with a mental illness. But what's even more awkward is, if you're not there for him, He's less likely to recover. I'm here to help, man, whatever it takes. Fanstore.com is the ultimate destination for the college sports fan. 
With over 30,000 items from virtually every school, CSTV Fan Store is the perfect place to get all things college sports. Go to fanstore.com today and get free shipping on all orders over $75. Just enter the code MYCSTV, all lowercase, to receive this exclusive offer. Fanstore.com, the one place to go to get everything you need. Why you always get the first? Because I have the higher hey, point. Hey, hey, hey. It's Bobby Bond. I'm going to touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. Part of Allstate Your Choice Auto Insurance. Are you in good hands? Oh, honey. It's Gorman. Bottom of the ninth. Gorman down to his last strike. He had a pitch. He's having problems at work again. Mm -hmm. be going. Here's a pitch. Strike three. Game over. Watch and control your home TV with Slingbox anywhere you can get an internet or cellular connection. You should have traded that guy a long time ago. Fired. Hey. Fired. Slingbox. Watch the 2007 Men's and Women's Cross Country Championship live. Monday at noon, only on CSTV. What are you doing? Making a call. To who? Allstate. Uh, you want to think about that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Idiot. Another crazy day in the SEC. Tim Tebow with a career day for Florida, passing for touchdowns and, of course, running for touchdowns. The only 2020 man in NCAA history leading Florida over Florida Atlantic. And we'll talk about Tim Tebow's weekly accolades as we dive into things here on SEC Game Room. Adam Zucker and Trev Alberts, of course, now joined by Brian Curtis in the captain's chair. Guys, how are we doing? We're doing all right. It's so an honor to be able to join you guys. You guys have been doing such a great job all day. I'm ready to talk SEC football. You got your Florida shirt on. Got my nice. Florida shirt on. Tim Tebow is a pretty good football player. And we're going to talk about that plenty, although Georgia was able to beat the Gators. And it's Georgia that's looking like the best team, at least in the SEC East, if not the whole conference right now. And Georgia's still alive for that championship berth. But first, we got proposals. Mikey Henderson on one knee. Did she say yes? It looks like she did. But no, Sean said no to the ball. And Kentucky pounces on. It. Big move for the Wildcats defense, and they take advantage. Andre Woodson going to Keenan Burton. Awesome connection, 36 yards. Wildcats on top. Georgia having trouble with turnovers, but Marino making up for his, barreling in from one yard out to make it 10 to 3, and then 10 7, and then the special teams on the punt block track. Great block right there by Georgia, but the key is when you get a turnover, you got to convert, and that's exactly what to do from the one right here. Thomas Brown gets a call into the end zone for a touchdown. The Bulldogs up 14 10. And the 1 2 punch continues. Marino breaking off a 21 yarder. Getting inside the 15, setting up Matt Stafford. He threw two picks, so he's going to run it in. Bulldogs on top, 21 to 10, 24, 13. Final minute, final moments here for Woodson on fourth down. The defense brings them down, and the dogs take it, 24 to 13. Guys, impressive stuff from that Bulldogs D. Fewest points that Kentucky scored this year. And, and obviously, Kentucky at one point after they got behind, after they were being up, they started throwing the ball a lot. They held them to just 23 yards. Rushing on the ground, which is a pretty impressive performance. I think Matt Stafford, though, Trev, can't afford those mistakes when it comes to uh, the SEC title game, if they get there. All right, here's Mark Rick after the game. I thought Kentucky came and fought harder than us, especially in the first half, and uh, really both sides of the ball. I didn't see our D-line doing a whole lot either, but uh, we played a lot better in the second half, allowed our skill to make some plays, and, and luckily we overcame the turnovers that we had. And with their conference slate over, Georgia would take the SEC East. If Tennessee would just do them a favor and lose to Vandy at home, looked like it might happen. Vandy up 14-9 at the half, thanks to Mackenzie Adams connecting with Jeff Jennings. Then in the third on third and goal, Adams to George Smith, who comes down with it. It's 24-9, Vandy, but the Vols start fighting back. And Eric Ainge has been the leader all season. Looks left, looks back to the right, splits the defenders. Austin Rogers, six yards for the touchdown. They go for two. They don't get it, so they're still down two. 
And this will help. They get three off the foot of Daniel Lincoln. Reliable all season long from 33 yards. Phil Fulmer likes it. But a big return for Vandy sets him up with a chance to win it. Brian Hanfeld just barely glancing off the uprights and the balls hold on to win this thing 25 to 24. Nice day for Mackenzie Adams, but Eric Ainge, 244 yards passing and three touchdowns. Arian Foster, over 100 yards running in this game, and Tennessee comes away with the win. They still have to play Kentucky next week. We'll talk about that as we take a look at these standings. Brian, of course, it's all set up for Tennessee to take the SEC East. It is. All they got to do is win next week. Well, it will not be an easy feat to have to go on the road to play, and a top 25 Kentucky team will be tough. You know, if you're LSU, though, Trev, and you're sitting there and you know you're going to play in the SEC championship game, you probably want to play Tennessee more than you want to play Georgia. Tennessee has got to be the quietest, almost luckiest team in the world to be at 5-2 and two in the SEC and 8-3 and three overall. Well, I give them an awful lot of credit. And, I, and first of all, I give Phil Fulmer credit, but I think Eric Ames deserves a lot of credit. Their defense at Tennessee has not been very good this year, but he has had to make plays time and time again. You saw it today, 244 yards passing, three touchdowns. Lucas Taylor had 10 big balls as well. Here's the problem. Next week, they go and play against that Kentucky team. Now, Kentucky defensive has struggled all year stopping the run. But what's the one thing Kentucky does pretty well defensively? They're they're a top 20 defense in pass Passing. defense. And Tennessee has not done a good job of running the ball. Next week, it's going to be about this Kentucky defense being able to stop the passing of Eric Ainge. If they get to an SEC championship game, does Tennessee... Eric Ainge deserves all the credit. He's a remarkable and, season. And I like the fact that Eric Ainge was poised today. He's a good quarterback. He's been making much better decisions this year than he did last year. All right. And, of course, if Tennessee plays and wins the SEC East, they're going to be in the conference championship game against LSU. And as we continue here on SEC Game Room, the Tigers looking to stay out of trouble in Rebel territory as they try to stay on target for not just the conference, but a national championship.
Dad is a rock star. 